Hello and welcome to Archer Field. Week 12 of the high school football season turns in to week two of the postseason. Division 7, Region 26 matchup pits the Delphus Jefferson Wildcats 7 and 4 out of the Northwest Conference against the number two seeded unblemished Antwerp Archers. They are the two seed in Division 7, Region 26 here at Archer Field. Scoop Miller, I'm Nate Stidham. Thanks for tuning in, and it's going to be a beautiful, fantastic night for some high school football, Skip. I cannot believe it. We're in the middle of the early part of November, 70 degrees, beautiful weather. What a night for football. Yeah, this is really incredible this entire season. Uh, the fans have been blessed with some fantastic weather and some fantastic football. And how about Archer Field here tonight? This looks like it's in pristine condition, as you mentioned. Here we are week 12. But uh, these two teams are really going to get physical out here in the field here tonight. Yeah, it's going to be a defense led by Delvis Jefferson that's really carried them in momentum-wise to this postseason. A four-game winning streak for Delvis Jefferson, and they've got it done really on both sides of the field. But a guy that's really stuck out to me in seeing Delvis Jefferson and going through the preparation, Cody Bailey. He's not a guy that necessarily stands out huge on your, on your stat sheet. But seeing him in person, he is a guy that flies around this field, and he's going to be a big piece and a defensive key for the Wildcats. Yeah, you're exactly right. He really can uh, make his presence felt on both sides of the football. He's a guy coming in that has uh, 27 receptions, averaged over 16 yards per reception. But he's also that uh, defensive standout as well. He has a pick on the season. He also has a special teams capability. He's run back a punt for his touchdown. He's ran back a kickoff for a touchdown. He's a guy they need out there in the field here tonight. Somebody that does return to the field tonight for Antwerp is Parker Moore. He is a big-time receiver, second-team GMC selection, second-leading re receiver for Antwerp, and it's going to be a very big piece to get another athletic option for this archer attack. Yeah, it really is a huge uh, welcome back to see Parker Moore out there. You know, he's been uh, saddled with an injury, but, again, that's a very deep crew that they have that he just adds some more depth to it, but he's also one of those special players that Antwerp fans are glad to have back in uni tonight. Skip, you've got to see Antwerp a handful of times this year. They're going to want to come out quick and really set the tone into this one. Jefferson, they won the toss and deferred, so we're going to get a look at that very effective offense of Antwerp. And Carson Ultimus, he's pretty good. I've heard him referred to by Miles and Randy as Ultimus Prime. He's He's a guy that can really get it all done. Uh, no question about it. He's such a tremendous leader for a junior. You know, he comes into the night's action uh, ne with nearly 7,000 passing yards in his career, and he's still just a junior. So he's a guy that uh, can hurt you with his arm and his legs, but he's also one of those main forces on the defense as well. Look at the starting lineups for the Antwerp Archers, led by head coach Jason, Ye Jason Hale and his fourth season as head coach, linebacking core. Dane Scholl, Reed Leasty, and Cyrus Gale. That is a trio that we're going to focus a lot on throughout the game. Secondary, Tavin Scholl, Carson Ultimus, Landon Brewer, Caden Winslow, Cam Fuller, that defensive line for Antwerp, Derek Hines, Kendrick Robinson, and Xander Smith. We just mentioned Jefferson won the toss and deferred, so that means we'll get a look at the Antwerp offense. Wide receiving core, Landon Brewer, Tavin Scholl, Cam Fuller, Caden Winslow, the offensive line left to right, Derek Hines, Austin Miller, Kendrick Robinson, Cyrus Gale, and Alexander Smith. Reed Leasty in that backfield. He is a dynamic duo. He can be a dynamic duo when you place him with Carson Artemis. 15 touchdowns on the season for Leasty. And then again, it's Carson Artemis, the GMC Offensive Player of the Year, saddling the Archer offense once again. Yeah, that's an offense that comes in scoring over 43 points per contest and uh, an offense that's been awfully hard to start. So, uh, Right now, it's going to be crucial, I think, for Delphus Jefferson. They have to set the tone early. You know, we talked about that prolific offense that Antwerp has, and now the defense really has to kind of set the tone in what ought to be a very physical football game here tonight at Archer Field. This Antwerp defense giving up less than 13 points a game scoop, and the other huge thing that stands out to me for that defense, plus 17 on the turnover margin. It is a team that is hungry for the ball, and they are actively searching to take that away from their opponent. Yeah, that'll win you a lot of games. It's just truly uh, amazing the fact that Antwerp has thrown just one interception on the season as Carson Altimus has thrown 30 touchdown passes, just one pick. And on the opposite side as well, the Archers have just fumbled the football way three times. So that's being very efficient. That's something they hope to continue here tonight. Reed Leasty, he's, I don't want to give him that announcer's curse, but he's 
the feature back for this Antwerp offense, and he's yet to put the ball on the ground this year. That was another thing that stood out offensively. Carson Autonomous, that one interception, that's even more impressive scoop when you look at the 250 passing attempts that he's had on the season. Combined the 48 touchdowns he has through the air and on the ground, Jefferson, they're going to have to stay home, play to their defensive keys, and they're going to have to keep him corralled. Yeah, you're exactly right. I think it's going to start in the trenches. You know, that's where you really have to to match up with Antwerp. Not a lot of teams have done that, but this is, I think, one of the strengths of this uh, Wildcat team, the fact that they have gotten better down in the trenches. They're doing a nice job of getting off uh, the football, and uh, I think that's where this game is probably going to be won down the trenches because both teams really have a lot of skilled players but to those guys that don't get a lot of the ink, I think they could have a long uh, ways as far as who wins this football game here tonight. Something that I was interested to see once we got into the stadium was how do these guys match up size-wise? You get Antwerp from the GMC, Delvis Jefferson out of the NWC. They're pretty, pretty evenly sized, I would have to say, Scoop. You look at that offensive line, I actually did, did, did the math and added it up. It's an average of 242 for Antwerp and a Jefferson right at 247. So it's a pretty even even matchup in the trenches, and that's that's going to make for a fun matchup. That's the way you have to love it, the fact that you're going to have to give each and every ounce of energy you have on each and every play because if you take a play off, both these teams are certainly capable of hurting you. So, again, uh, it's going to be a physical match, and we'll see which team can really grind it out for four quarters. Could be the victor here tonight. To get ready to look at the Delvis Jefferson starters here at Archer Field as we're just getting set for kickoff defensively as the Wildcats will take the field first as they won the toss and elected to defer. Tanner Voorhees, Daniel Myers, Jesse Long, and Zach Houks, the front line for the Wildcats. Linebacking core, Logan Murray, Carter Agner, and Trent Teeman. Andrew Miller, Cole Hurston, Cody Bailey, and Braylon Scalf, the secondary for Delvis Jefferson. Braylon Scalf's just ridiculous numbers. Ten interceptions coming in to lead this Wildcat defense. That's incredible, the number of picks they've had on the season. I believe as a team they have maybe uh, close to 19, but uh, you know it's been a, a tremendous defense. They have a lot of speed in that secondary, which is going to be important because they can match up with these receivers in that strong offense at Antwerp Pass. So right now that will kind of be strength against strength. We'll see how that plays out as this one unwinds. Delvis Jefferson out. On the left side of the 50, no kick away from the 40 as Art Antwerp, they get set to take the field as they are on the far sideline tonight here at Archer Field. It's it's a packed house. Not too many people have stayed home for this one, Scoop. It's, it's going to be a fun matchup to see who can punch their ticket into the regional semifinals next Saturday. The winner of this game will battle against either Waynesville Goshen or Gibsonburg, a team that I don't imagine – Either of these teams have seen on their schedule this season. And both these teams playing with a lot of confidence coming in tonight. You mentioned the fact Delphus Jefferson's won four straight. And meanwhile, Antwerp on that 11-game winning streak and also has won 18 of the last 19. They're only lost a 26-21 second-round playoff loss to the Eden Blue Bombers a year ago. Just set for kickoff here at Archer Field. Getting ready to kick it away for Delphus Jefferson is Braylon Scalf. As we are ready for week 12 of the high school football season. Scouts kick goes end over end, left over right, and it will go and take a bounce at the five and roll into the end zone. So out come the Antwerp Archer offense, led by Carson Aldemus, the six foot, 170 pound senior, comes into the contest. 48 combined touchdown scoop. He's, we've talked about it all pregame. He is dynamic. That's about as simple as you can put it. Yeah, no question about it. And this uh, Delphus Jefferson defense will be tested. But uh, credit to uh, Braylon Scoff that time, kicks it uh, in the end zone. So a long field here for the Archers. And uh, with Scoff doing the kicking, the average starting point has been the 24-yard line for opponents this season. So once again, he's been a big weapon for the Wildcats. Archer offense averaging just under 43 points a game. First snap to Aldemus. He'll look to the Jefferson sideline, swing the pass out and caught at that near sideline. It'll be hauled in by the Archer receiver, Landon Brewer, a first-team GMC selection. You can see on our Charles River Laboratories replay, it was just a quick look 
out to that near sideline for a quick moving of the chains brought to you by Leland Smith Insurance. Well, you have to love the fact they're trying to get Landon Brewer established early. That's his 46th reception on the season. He went over the 1,000-yard mark in receptions last week in that win against Harden Northern. Now at least he, he'll stand to the right hip of Artemis, and it'll be a quarterback keeper. That RPO look that Artemis does so well. He'll get just across the 30-yard line, going to be brought down by a pair of Wildcats. Leading the way was Logan Murray for the Wildcat defense. Yeah, nice job by uh, Logan Murray and also uh, Daniel Myers there on the stop. And right now, you know, that's going to be the key. They're going to have to control first down that Wildcat defense and try to slow down this potent uh, Antwerp attack coming in scoring over 43 points a contest. Prime. Artemis gets the snap. He'll throw to the 39. He's going to be just short of the first down marker. And there to make the stop was Braylon Scout. We talked about the 10 interceptions. He can fly around defensively, 49 tackles as well. No question about it. And Parker Moore gets his first reception on just the uh, first series. He's been back in this season. There's a nice run there off the left uh, tackle. And once again, another first down for this Antwerp offense. First down tonight brought to you by Leland Smith. Leland Smith Insurance Services, your first call for all your insurance needs. And that's the second time that we've seen that first down be advanced via the RPO. Well, this is that Archer offense that fans have seen all season. Up to this point, the Archers have scored 11 touchdowns on their opening 11 possessions this season. They're trying to make it 12 for 12 right here. Carson Autumn is standing in the pocket, swings out to the Antwerp sideline, and a Receiver is going to run over the Jefferson defender, Trent Seaman. Oh, nice safe play that time by the Archers. Trying to get that ball in the flats. That time was caught by Reed Leachty, who slipped out of the backfield into the flats. And a good stop there by the Wildcats. As the Archers are going to be looking at second and eight here. Ball in Wildcat territory in the 48-yard line. First time the Archers have snapped inside Jefferson territory. A high snap to Aldemus. He'll give to his running back, Leasty. He'll break off of a tackle. Out of the 40, comes to the 35, being shuffled out of bounds. But enough for another Leland Smith insurance first down. And Leasty, he's getting involved on the ground through the air. That's exactly what Antwerp wants to do early. Well, Leasty is such a low. That time he picks up uh, 14 yards. You see it right there on the uh, replay. But at least he was a guy that picked up 177 yards and a couple touchdowns last week in that opening round playoff win against Harden Northern. He did that on just 14 carries, so he averaged almost 13 yards per crack. Antwerp's moved the ball 60 yards in over two minutes on their opening <laughs> drive. Another quick pass to the near sideline, hauled in by Brewer, his second reception on this opening drive. Oh, tremendous job by this Archer offense. They're really doing a great job of spreading the wealth. We've seen three different receivers uh, make catches here for Antwerp. They've done a nice job of mixing up the pass and the run. They've done a nice job of going to the short side and to the wide side. Second and uh, five coming up. Now a trio look to the right side. We'll set a man in motion. Least he, he will this time take the handoff from Autobus with nowhere to go. He'll be shy of the 35-yard line and I think for the first time here in the quarter scoop, Antwerp looking at a third down conversion. Yeah, that's an awfully big play right here. And right now, Antwerp's going a little tempo here. That tempo will slow down as Carson Artemis will now look to the right sideline, get the play call. Lisi to his right hip, two receivers to the left and right of Artemis. Artemis rolling out to the right, looking down the field. He'll air it out into double coverage and intercepted by the Wildcats, picked off by Braylon Scout. Talked about it, talked about it, talked about it. Who else? Braylon Scout has 11th interception of the season. Uh, watch it coming up here on the replay. Uh, Braylon Scout uh, reads this like a book. And you can see why he was selected uh, first team Northwest Conference defense. There you see Ultimus kind of forced to step up into the pocket there. And there you see the pick and a nice solid return. So that's the first time Antwerp has not scored on their opening drive this season in a golden opportunity for the Delphus Jefferson offense. They'll start out on their own 29 yard line, trying to get a lead on Antwerp, something that has not happened all season long. Trent Tiemann, he will operate the Delphus offense. He's gonna hand it off to Andrew Miller. Miller will work to the far sideline. He's got a hole and he's gonna be shy 
of the 40-yard line and a big play and a gain of nine on a first down carry for Andrew Miller. We've seen that duo usage of backs between Cole Hurston and Andrew Miller for Douglas Jefferson throughout the season, and this time it's the senior Miller getting the first nut. Yeah, that's so crucial uh, for Delphi Jefferson. They have to control first down. They have to establish a run, and great job there. Miller comes in averaging six and a half yards per pop, picks up uh, nine big yards right there in first down. Delphi Jefferson keeping it on the ground, trying to hurdle a defender. Wasn't able to hurdle much. Another handoff to Andrew Miller to get the ball across and another first down A Leland Smith Insurance and Services. Now this is something we've seen Delphus Jefferson do, especially last week in that uh, win against Ayersville. They put together on their opening drive a 14-play uh, drive. It resulted in seven points. They also had a 13-play drive result in points in the first half as well. First handoff of the day for Cole Hurston will go into Archer territory down to the 45-yard line. That shows you the mix-up and speed. Hurston to Miller, three plays, moving it on the ground. Well, look at it right there. Solid blocking up front, and Cole Hurston, who comes in averaging nearly eight yards per carry on a season, once again is able to move the chains, and that takes the ball all the way into uh, Antwerp territory where the Wildcats will have a fresh set of downs on the Archer 46-yard line. Delvis Jefferson trying to capitalize on an opening possession interception. Man in motion, Teeman will keep it himself. He goes down the center to the left hash, now to the 30. Still going, he's gonna be tackled at the 30-yard line. Another first down brought to you by Leland Smith. You'll see it right there, they fake the jet motion there and then Teeman just keeps himself. He's able to get 16 yards there on first down. So another first down for the Wildcats. And just like that, uh, Delphus Jefferson on the move. They have the ball on the Archer 30-yard line, trying to uh, give themselves an early lead. Remember, Antwerp has not been behind in a football game all season long. Delphus Jefferson trying to be the first team to do that. And the first negative play goes for some positive yardage. Andrew Miller was able to have some extra effort and maybe got back to that original line of scrimmage, but he was met immediately in the backfield. First time we've seen that Archer front seven really bring the pressure. Yeah, great penetration up front and great play there off the edge there to try to force Miller upfield. And that was a great run by Miller just to get a yard out of that. That looked like it was going to be maybe a tackle for a loss of two or three yards. Instead, uh, Miller picks up one, second and nine coming up for the Wildcats. Just under seven minutes to play in the first quarter. Teeman. Takes a snap, another handoff, and another short run for the Wildcat rushing attack. Andrew Miller came into the game with 899 yards on the ground. He's looking like he's going to have a long night fighting for each and every yard against this Archer defense. Third yeah, down. this Archer defense is awfully physical. They've done a nice job winning the trenches. In the first quarter alone this year, Nate, uh, Antwerp outscored opponents 199-14. to 14. Right now, uh, Delphus Jefferson has a chance to uh, put up an early score. Man in motion, Teeman will keep it himself, and he will find a hole. He's near the end zone, and he's in. A 28-yard touchdown run on the quarterback keeper for Trent Teeman. Will put the first mark on the scoreboard, least famous recipe chicken. 6-0, Delphus Jefferson. Well, watch it right there. That time he just kind of lowers the shoulders, able to break an arm tackle there. And then he, once he gets to that second level, Teeman turns on the Jets here. And just like that, uh, Delphus Jefferson's taking an early lead here over the Antwerp Archers. And right now they're trying to tack on the PAT. First time Antwerp's been behind all season. How about that? It took 11 weeks for the Archer defense to make that happen. 7-0 after the Braylon Scout point after try with 6-0-1 to play here into the first quarter. Delvis Jefferson leading. Welcome back to Archer Field. Delvis Jefferson leading 7-0 after a 28-yard touchdown run by Trent Seaman. We'll put the Wildcats on top, 7-0. Our scoreboard is provided by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken and Walpock and Adelphus Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Home style happens here. And how about that, Skip? Archers find themselves trailing for the first time, and it's week 12. 
Yeah, what an impressive start here for the Wildcats. Not only did they get the first stop of the season on Antwerp's opening drive, but then the offense came up big, marched right down the field, and uh, really did it the way they wanted coming in, filed the game plan, trying to establish that run. They did that early. And right now, uh, Jefferson up a touchdown. And here's that uh, special teams weapon. Braylon Scoff getting ready to kick it off. Scoff was able to get it into the end zone for a touchback on a last kickoff. This time it'll be picked up at the 10. And then immediately swarmed Elvis Jefferson. They are making a lot of noise in every asset of the game right now, Scoop. A big special team stop. Oh, no question about that time. Caden Winslow is uh, going to be uh, corralled. And we talked about the average start position uh, on kickoffs against Delphus Jefferson's been a 24 yard line. Well, this time they have him pinned inside their Antwerp's own 20 yard line. So great special teams play by Delphus Jefferson. Now the defense back at it after getting that early pick there on Antwerp's initial drive. See how Carson Artemis can bounce back. Yard goes now a pass on to the near sideline. It's a pass caught by Parker Moore. Parker Moore finally he wrapped up and thrown into that Delvis Jefferson sideline. Cody Bailey, the senior, makes the stop for Delvis Jefferson. We talked about Parker Moore returning for Antwerp tonight. You see him trying to get integrated early. Yeah, no doubt about it. You know, he's been that go-to guy over the course of his career, trying to get him back into things. But what a great play by Cole Hurston there. That's a play Antwerp's had a lot of success with this season. He's able to stifle. Waterman forced out of the pocket, looking to pass. He got pressure from his backside. He'll now find himself down the Antwerp sideline. Roll out of bounds. And he made contact. Oh, River. Mavericks were able to play. Yeah, he's coming closer from the backside with Daniel Myers. Breathing down the neck of Waterman. Yeah, nice play by Altimus there that time. He's able to pick up uh, some good chunks of yardage. But uh, it will be uh, short of the first down. Again, that's something we'll see a lot. You know, Altimus makes a lot of great decisions. He's the guy turning his arm to play. That time he's able to get to the edge, pick up positive yards. And for moves the one on third down to first tonight. They're going to pick up their first and two quick pass. On this is bound from the end for the sideline. A quick snap, a look to your sideline. It's going to be right at the line of game. That'll be enough for a first down. Well, great execution by Antwerp that time. That's one of those timing routes, just a quick out route. Uh, they knew exactly where the chains were at, executed it perfectly. That's a huge third down conversion that's going to extend this drive. It was going to be first down and sponsor for tonight's broadcast. I set it down. For Antwerp. Right. Make the handoff, roll out to the far sideline. He's going to be met by a Wildcat defender, Carter Agner. He's able to get him into the sideline. He is deep. All of us now did a little bit of everything out of that RPO look. And for the most part, he's double covered. He's just home and able to maintain. Yeah, no question about it. You know, we talked about how the trench is going to be awfully big. We talked about the speed in that secondary for Delphus Jeff. So, Antwerp may have to be a little bit more patient tonight and just wait for those opportunities to throw that deep ball. But right now, just try to execute, uh, again, stay on schedule, try to pick up four or five yards and crack. Second four coming up. What if it's even more again? He's got a nice lane to the 30. Not going to be able to get to the 30 one time. He's going to take a heavy hit in front of his part of the sideline. So that's going to be enough for another first down. So, uh, Brett Altimus that time, uh, again, is able to just get some positive yards, going to move the chain. Again, Antwerp uh, looking to drive here after they had good penetration on their initial drive before the pick into the threat. Now they're driving here in their second position tonight. The pass throws in triple coverage by Altimus. Antwerp was moving right down the field. They went past on that midfield. It looks like this team. To bring in that draft. This will be the second time that at least been looked at in that air game. Uh, there you see him. They slip him out of the back. But again, he's kind of that hybrid back. We talked about how effective he is as a runner, but he's also very uh, nifty. Got great hands. We're going to have a Delphus Jefferson timeout. 436 to play here in the first quarter. Antwerp 
trying to battle back after an interception and a double Jefferson touchdown. Wildcats getting 7 0 here in the region. 26. Matchup in the postseason. All of it. Oh, Mickey Hanoff again. He's going to come into Melbourne territory. He tackled at the 45 yard line. But again, another move of the team for the Luther Smith first down. Another nice read there by Carson Altimus. He's able to uh, fake the handoff, uh, keep it himself, and gets the ball into Wildcat territory at the 45 yard line. I think uh, you know the Wildcats are more than happy to, to force Altimus to run with the football and try to take away some of those vertical routes. More than a shotgun, he'll stand at the team. He's going to air it out down the end for sideline and over. Ahead of his intended target and out of bounds, going right into the direction of Braylon South again. But this ball is uncatchable by now all 40 and ball two. Yeah, that time they had uh, Landon Brewer uh, isolated there on that uh, wide side. They had the one on one coverage they wanted, but once again, tremendous coverage uh, by the DBs for the Wildcats. That ball falls incomplete, second and 10 here for the yard. And you back to four all of it, uh, three receivers to the right, to the two top. Mark in the first quarter, all of big snap. He's looking. He's got a face pressure. Now he'll switch direction there down, down the near sideline. Nearly intercepted once again. Same play, just went opposite side. And this time it was Cody Bailey with a great defensive effort. Yeah, tremendous job by Bailey. Watch the throw right there. It's going to end up hitting Bailey there in the numbers there. But again, that time they isolated Camden Fuller, the junior on the short side, but consecutive vertical routes end up in two incomplete passes. So third and 10 coming up for Antwerp. Another opportunity for Delphus Jefferson to get off the field here on third down. Antwerp, one for one on third down trying on this possession. This side, they're half a good field. Linebackers in a full set. Does it come for Alderman? Alderman going to run to the Jefferson sideline. He's going to be grabbed by his jersey. Agner couldn't haul him down. Now a big block at midfield. And Prime's got a hole. He comes back to the 30, 25, 10, 5. Touchdown, Prime. A 45-yard scamper. I think you got to give him credit for 80 yards on that play, Steve. What a touchdown drive to answer. No question about it. Look at it right here. Looks like it's going to be a tackle for loss, a sack. You're going to see great penetration. But somehow he keeps his feet there after breaking the tackle. Then he gets to the white side. You see a couple of big blocks right there. It does a nice job of, of cutting it back. He's going to take it to the house from 45 yards out. And now the archer, the champs are tie here with the PAT. i tell you what, I'll take a... I'll take a shootout between Trent Keenan and Carson Alderman all day long. The snap back and the PAT try for Kendrick Robinson will break the score to 7 7 on a least famous recipe ticket scoreboard as we'll return here for playoff football on WLSN. You can do, I can do better, says Carson Alderman back here at Archer Field. Two Miller and Nate Siddle. 7 7 on the least famous recipe ticket Board. You told Trent Team to do it on the first drive for Delvin Jefferson, Park Autobus. He forgot all about that interception on the opening drive, and he took care of business and let Antwerp right into the end. Yeah, he just stepped up and made a play, and uh, that time Antwerp was able to convert on both their third downs. The second one for that 45 yard touchdown run by Altimus. But again, this is the type of game I think we expected. Both the uh, offenses playing very well, put points on the board. And there's a squib kick that's going to be recovered. By the Wildcats, about their own 37 yard line. So, decent starting position for Delphus Jefferson trying to retake the lead. Well, Jefferson did a tremendous job picking it up. It goes through the air too much, but as you look at that quarterback front, that running back option in the backfield, you saw Hurst and Miller and Demon in a dynamic trio on that opening run. Yeah, we may see more or less the same here until Antwerp can prove they can stop the run. So, certainly. That was going to be the uh, from Coach Ben uh, Browick there, the fact they want to establish a run early. They did that opening drive. We'll see what they come up with in their second possession. If you get the snap, he'll get the running back. And he goes to about the fourth. Getting the handoff 
for Delvin Kevin from that time was Andrew Miller. At that time, nice run by Miller. You know, he was really hit at the line of scrimmage, but somehow he was able to just kind of slip his way for three yards there in first down. So, you know, important that they stay on schedule because this is a team that, you know, doesn't have a lot of big play runs on their season. They have a lot of long drives. Another handoff this time to Fuller. And he's going to get tied up to his own 25 yard line to set up a third down and a manageable for the Jefferson offense. Another three minutes play here in the first quarter. Right here, this is Delphi's Jefferson game right here. They want to keep that ball on the ground. Not only establish that run we talked about, Nate, but they also, by doing so, that shortens games out. You know, last week, they only, there was only three possessions by each team in the opening half. And they would like more or less that type of game here tonight against this Archer offense that's been so prolific all season long. They third down for Jefferson's team. They'll keep it on the and he'll dive into Archer territory. That'll be enough for a Leland Smith first down. And Stephen showing, hey, I can do a little bit of that RPO as well. Yeah, no question about it. That time, a great zone read there by Trent Teeman, the, the senior. You know, he's a guy that was, I don't mention, uh, Northwest Conference as receiver last year. And this year, he's been, uh, I will mention, all conference as a quarterback. What a great job he's done making that transition. You know, the hand also be tied and noted to be five. That play was a danger of going for negative yardage. It's only about the second time that you can see here on our Charles River Laboratory replay. Archer's getting good at penetration for that offensive line that we talked about being so deeply matched. They held their own on the defense. Yeah, that time Kendrick Robson was able to get that initial surge into the backfield. But again, uh, credit to the Wildcats. They somehow was able to get one yard out of that. Here we come this post. It'll be a hit on the floor. He has the 25-yard line. And now we have third down at about seven, maybe six. Yeah. yeah. And for a lot of teams, I think this might be a throwing down. But I think for the, the Wildcats, this might be four down territory. So right now. You know, certainly they can keep the ball on the ground here right now, try to get a big chunk of this uh, third and seven on third down, and then if you can get it to a workable fourth down scenario, they can possibly go for it. Big play for this Archer defense. And keep an eye on the RPO with two more hits work. He throws out, he gets passing and caught, but right at the line of scrimmage, he's going to give him a yard. Miller is able to hold in the reception. He's 26 to beat, so now it's question time for Delta Jefferson. You don't have a play clock here at a Hunter Field, but the game clock at a 37. I believe Jefferson will have to snap another play in this quarter, but hey, we got a timeout to stop him and let them get round. We'll take one as well. I'm running down here in the first quarter. Six four down for Jefferson. Nine, seven, seven. Here on WLSN. Fourth down coming for Elvis Jefferson out of an answer timeout. Wildcats need six yards, and they are going to look to put it away out of that timeout. Where the scouts average 36 yards. So find a good opportunity here to pitch. And for very deep in their own territory. Have back now to get a roving pot, and it's at the corner, but it's to the end zone. So a touchback will set Antwerp up at the 20 yard line once again. Second time out of two, out of three possessions that Antwerp has turned for those points. And again, right now, the field position, I think, is going to be big for Delphus Jefferson. We talked about the fact, you know, Antwerp uh, has been so good at moving the football, but forcing them into that long field certainly is going to pay dividends for your uh, defense. Again, uh, this has been an excellent first quarter, uh, particularly, I think, for Delphus Jefferson. They did a nice job of, of shortening the game a little bit. This is just the third possession here of the opening half of the Archers. Norman will take a high snap and he's going to give it to Lisey and he's got a big hole to the 40. Cuts inside to the 50. Lisey turns to the Jefferson sideline and it turns on the Jets, but it'll be hauled down from behind. Carter Agner was there to chase him from behind. That was reminiscent of the DK Metcalf scramble on the interception tackle. What a first of speed for Reed Lisey. 
I tell you what, Reed Leach has just gotten better each and every week. And that time, he was able to get to that second level before he really had to uh, try to break a tackle. Finally tracked down by the uh, sophomore, second team Northwest uh, Conference linebacker, Cardner Agner. But not before a tremendous play. And that will be the end of the first quarter. And what a good one it's been here at Archer Field. It's been a great one. Three more quarters to come. Lee's famous recipe, chicken scoreboard, down the Jefferson 7, Archer Field 7. Here on WOSF. Welcome back to Arthur Field 7 7 here. We'll start the second quarter on a Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Scoreboard. Our scoreboard is provided by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken and Waffles and Adelta. Call Lee for all your candy games. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Home style happens here. So a long run by Reed Lee. He sets up Angela just in time. Adelta Shepard Red Sun. He's getting played here in the second quarter. Division 7, Grade 26. Tournament matchup going out of the pocket. A low show throw in a pop ball to the two. A uh, intended target for the now through three in the position for an order. Yeah, that's a ball that normally uh, Antwerp's going to be able to uh, handle and execute, but that time passed just a little bit under thrown. And that's a huge break there for Delta Jefferson because right now they really have to kind of bow their neck here, try to find a way to. Uh, uh, keep the archers off the board. Remember, the archers, uh, their top field goal kicker is not here tonight, so this would probably be four down territory, you would think, here for Amherst. Get me back to for the archers. Hold them at the regular man in motion. Ball's on the ground, and Delvis Jefferson gets it. Voorhees falls on top of it in the second turnover by Antwerp in the first half. This time, it's on the ground, but Antwerp, they're doing things they do not do throughout the season. We've talked about that 17 Turnover Jefferson. They're plus two tonight. Yeah, amazing uh, that that stat you talked about when you're plus 17, great things happen. But right now in the night, the Archers are minus two. That time, a little miscommunication there on the uh, jet sweep there. And credit to Wildcats. You know, I thought that was a big part of their win last week against Ayersville, the fact that they forced three pilot turnovers but did not have a turnover on their side for the ball. So right now the defense comes up big. They had their backs to the wall. Now the offense would love to give uh, some field position back and maybe even a score here if they take over. Jefferson, their first play for scrimmage will be a short handoff to Hurston. No more forward is shy of the 20-yard line. So again, a two on that first down run by Hurston. Delvin Jefferson all put it away on that previous set, but they've shown signs of life being able to shoot the ball on the ground. Yeah, they have really tested this Antwerp defense, especially down there in the trenches. And that time, Cole Hurston, who came in with 596 yards on the season, is able to add a couple more to his credit there. Big red boat, Steven, he'll make the handoff, keep it himself, and he's not going to get much on that quarterback keeper. No, a foul. Four yards, it looks like it's what Delvin Jefferson will have to pick up. That yeah, great job by team in there. Uh, he sold the uh, handoff there on the uh, jet motion, kept it himself, was able to uh, pick up another three yards. But a big opportunity for this Archer defense to get off the field here. Third and five coming up. The far sideline, tight end, and running back work with Stuart and Steven. Steven. Goes out of the pocket. He's got a man open. He finds Scalp at the 40. Caught as he tumbles out of bounds. Broken coverage by the Antwerp defense on lead. So he leaves first down. Carl River replay. You can see it was just a big boot out to the left. And nobody stayed with Scalp. Now that time, Scalp kind of slips out of the backfield on the wheel route. And again, a well executed, a nice toss there by team and a huge third down conversion for the Wildcats. Good work for Delvin Jefferson. That'll be a handoff and keeping it on the ground is Andrew Miller, senior back. He has been a good threat. Therefore, for Delvin Jefferson, he made it. Four made the start this week ten. Andrew Miller did not play in that rivalry matchup in Central. Seems to be well integrated right back into the self call that second down coming. A nice job controlling first down here by the Wildcats, and they pick up uh, four. We're going to get our first penalty flag of the evening. 
I think we are and that's to be on the East for a couple of That's going to benefit Elvis Jefferson. They needed six yards. Through the tank. Well, that's going to go to one yard now. Roachman by hand for a penalty. That's a game after this match. But what is it? Yeah, those, those are penalties you hate to see as a coach, uh, especially here in Week 12. But as you mentioned, uh, really it's been a clean football game at this juncture. But you always want to avoid the pre-snap penalties. Come bring up a second and one here for the Wildcats. Out in the line, Miller knows where to go. You saw the pressure build just before that snap. And for Weber allowing no room, and going to back him up, but they lost the ball on that play to go. Yeah, tremendous job there by the Archers uh, defensive line there. We saw a couple guys get in, Derek Hines, Andrew Smith. Be able to get a tackle for a loss of one yard. So third and two coming up here for the Wildcats, who just converted on their last third down. They've been converting at a 48% clip on third down of the season. A big one coming up here. Attention to come on third down. They won't need it this time. Steven with the RPO and a first down into Archer territory. Making the tackle for Antwerp is Carson Alderman. Steven loving that RPO, continuing to battle that, back and forth. That's a tremendous run there by Team. And uh, once again, uh, fake the handoff. He's able to cut it back nicely against the green. And another first down uh, on a third down conversion by the Wildcats. They now have the ball in Archer territory with a fresh set of down. In the back, he's now two men in motion. It would be Morty and Agner that will go to the right side of the line of scrimmage. Now Hurst, and he finds a hole behind that right side. He's to the 30, falls down shy of the 25. You saw that big wall go to the right side, and Hurst, and he says, hey, I'm going to go behind you guys. Six. First yardage for the Wildcats. Yeah, watch it right there. Nice job there uh, by the Wildcats. We saw a nice block there uh, from the polling guard there, number 56, and that was Logan Murray. Again, uh, that time they went unbalanced side to the wide side, but did not look like Antwerp made that adjustment, so they were outnumbered, and uh, Hurston makes it pay. Another fresh set of downs. Nope, will put side of the field, run the same play, and Hurston looks like he has to let the cut to the inside. Maybe he lost a little bit of his foot. I mean, he had a couple of black jerseys coming quickly. The hurt wasn't able to make that cut this time in a minimal game. Pick up. Yeah, nice job there by Cyrus Gale there, the uh, linebacker, first team uh, Green Medals Conference linebacker this year. He comes up, makes a big play. He's going to hold the Wildcats to a gain of uh, three yards there, but the second seven coming up. Delta Jefferson trying to retake that uh, lead. Against the backfield, for the tight end. The receiver, Lutz, right for team and for the year, Lutz, right in motion. Team is getting the hand off to Miller. A penalty flag down. The Miller near to the 20 yard line, and that has holding written all over it. It really does. It's going to be an insane holding. Watch it right here. That time, Miller in a quick hip. There you see the hold there from behind. Illegal. Graphs there, and that's a tough break because that kind of throws the Wildcats off schedule. Again, this is an offense really designed by the run, but there you see the uh, the hold signal from the referee. Boy, that's going to throw you off schedule. But the way this offense has been clicking for Delphus Jefferson, certainly uh, a lot of things can happen. They're probably going to be four down territory. We're kind of in this gray area where you're you're maybe. Certainly out of field goal position now, but remember, they do have a solid kicker we've talked about. I think he does have a season long and 36 yard field goal. Bailey in motion. Steven will pick the hand off Bailey, keep it himself. He's going to go to the 35 and tackle at the 34 yard line. So another third down coming, the longest of the night, though, for Delta Jefferson. That was a nice play there by that Archer defense. You know, right now being a third and 16, we're going to call it. You know, you, just, you could bend a little bit, but you can't break. And right now, uh, certainly Delta Jefferson, uh, their toughest third down scenario tonight, but they've come up big uh, several times here. We'll see what they have up their sleeve here at third and 16. I think your playbook gets a little bit uh, thinner right here. And for 22 yard line, advanced drive. Put a six and a half play in the first quarter and a brick down. Andrew Miller, everybody on the Elvis Jefferson sideline, one of the safe pass, but you can see 
on the Charles River Laboratory replay. It looks like he got that front portion of the jersey too. I don't. I think the penalty flag may have deserved to stay in the pocket. Yeah, I think they wanted the horse collar on that. Uh, you could, you saw it right there in the replay, but uh, a big stop there by the Archer defense, and the uh, Wildcats are going to force the punt away. There you see the graphs there. That's some sheer strength there, as you saw there on the uh, interior. The replays are presented by Charles River and Central, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio. It's hiring. This is John Scott. CRiver.com will fly today. Scout will put it away right to left. Christian had to hang up at the 10 and take a Delta Jefferson roll to about the like the five or seven yard line. Second time tonight to receive a nearly perfect 12 to quarter punt by Braylon Scout. He, he's got that part of the game down as well. He could do everything. Well, we talked about how good their special teams has been all season long. You know, not just their kickoff coverage, but also their uh, their punting. Their punt coverage been excellent. And uh, once again, you know, Antwerp looking at a long field here. Again, they, their average starting position has been well inside their own 20-yard line here tonight. That makes it a little bit tougher to put up a uh, 43 points scored like they've been doing all season long. Running at the road to seven, Alderman had the running back in the backfield. Maybe a breather, studying that Jefferson team. Look standing. The field is Alderman. Alderman. And a 48-yard touchdown run to the only Archer score. This time it'll be a handoff to Lacey. He's not going to go for a punt. And Lacey breaking that huge run on that last drive for the bubble. Hitted that on Archer. That's the second time they turned the ball over tonight. Yeah, nice job that time. Uh, looked like Wildcats uh, stacked seven guys up in the box. This is where uh, Lance Brewer could be awfully dangerous here. He might get one-on-one coverage. Out on the uh, edge, we'll see if Baltimus uh, tries to go to him here in a vertical route. To the left, to the right, Alderman looks to his left. He has a receiver up to the 20-yard line. Hold in. Looks like Landon Brewer, the archer. So, all it is, New Jersey, you can hold a TV monitor. They are more to die dead. Yeah, bro. Yeah, nice job there. Yeah. The quick slant here from Brewer. And uh, that's going to be a huge conversion there. Gives a little breathing room. Double pass. Now for the Archer offense. They swing out to the near side. We see. And then they reverse handoff. Not a reverse handoff. Just a handoff and then a halfback pass. And it's not much area to go. Delta Jefferson again. Staying home and playing the best side. That's often important. You stay disciplined to uh, read your keys. But good execution there by Antwerp. And that's not one of those everyday plays you've seen from Antwerp. They well executed. They pick up uh, five yards there in first down. What is it in the back? Second down and five coming to the Archer offense. Tied seven seven. And here's David Presley kicking scoreboard. And a big tackle out of bounds by Carter Acker. Going a little, a little bit of an extra soft. <laughs> and Steve Parker Moore trying to. Might maybe for a late penalty flag, but I don't know that he's going to get that that call. Well, I love that play call right there. Get the ball to Parker Moore, one of your athletes, and uh, Landon Brewer let him do the blocking. And then Parker Moore go off to the sideline. Not a good for a play. He got some time to move on it. be a big game. A hard sack on the sideline, and I imagine it's just a plus three. Exchange between the individuals. We're going to have a lot of those hard taps tonight. We talked about, you know, how both of these teams are so physical. Both these teams really want this uh, football game. And both these teams coming in believe they can advance the next round. That's what makes this such a great matchup here tonight. And you, you had the fact we've got a great crowd here. What an atmosphere. He jumped in out here tonight. Top bottom three. All of them. In the backfield, he'll pick the eight off, and now the RPO turns to a pass. That's the 39. Bowler able to ball in the ground. The junior hit first reception of the night. And that'd be enough for about four yards, second down and six. Coming down for Antwerp. A nice job. Fuller, one of those uh, many uh, receivers uh, for Antwerp. He was second team, Green Mills Conference this year. Also one of four receivers with uh, more than 25 receptions on a season. That makes these guys awfully dangerous. They've got uh, really 
you know, five, six, six different guys they can throw to at any given time. Corner to the staff to look the far side in and out of the hand. Uh, this is a target Parker Moore. Moore. Every time Waterman has went into this direction, he's been seriously sure handed. That's what he should call it in. He had a lot of pressure coming in. This is the base of that step. Yeah, they had the right play called there. They went with the quick bubble screen. Again, you get the ball to a guy like Parker Moore, and you know, let your athletes make plays, but that time falls incomplete. That's a huge break for that Delphus Jefferson defense. Going to bring up a third down and a long six here. Great opportunity for the Wildcats to get off the field here on third down. One of his has three receivers to the top of the screen. He's going to roll out. The far half is going to complete it out to Lee. He caught it to 40. He'll turn it up to the 45, and I believe he got it up. He does. He will get about a yard more than what he needed to move the chain. Another Leland Smith experience first down. And the archer continues to move the ball down to two, three and a half. Three and a, half. a great job there by Altmus. He, he took a look downfield. Uh, did not have uh, anyone available, so he went to a safety valve. Leasty coming out of the backfield. Huge conversion on third down. First and 10 coming up from your own 47 yard line here at the Archer. Hornerman. Quarterback throw. He's going to go to midfield and he's going to be shoved all the way back to the 45. And then an extra shove at the end by Daniel Myers is going to bring the penalty flag out and that'll give the Archer 15 yards. You'll be able to watch that on our Charles River replay. That was a little bit after the play. But you like to see that energy and that excitement out of your defense if you're done with Jefferson. Yeah, and Altibus, uh, Altibus really draws this flag by himself. He's going to flop there a little harder than he needed to. But there you see the extra emphasis. That flag was thrown up a few feet higher than it probably needed to be. But that's one of those big plays. We talked about you know, the importance of uh, avoiding those pre-stamp penalties, but you also want to avoid those post-play penalties. That's a big one there because that's going to be another first down for Antwerp. That'll take the ball into Delphus Jeff territory. The Archers will have a first down from the 36 yard line. Well, the second Delphus Jefferson penalty, but now 25 yards of uh, penalty yardage has been filed. Stretch set it down. 40 yards for 103 to play. Automat will keep it himself. He made one tackle. Moves to the Jefferson sideline. He breaks a second tackle. Spins off of a third. Down to the 10 yard line. Carson Automat's time showing what he can do again. Now, uh, what a big-time run by the junior, Carson Altimus. Uh, and, again, credit his guys for giving him a hole, but uh, look at the yak yards, you know. The yards after contact, he kept his feet churning. He made a nice spin move. He's able to take that all the way down. I think they're going to spot it on the 12-yard line. So what a big run there by Altimus. And we're trying to take their first lead of the night. See how much the clock is played in wants to work with. They'll have to play defense to start the third quarter. 7 7. Damon trying to be chicken for more. Please see. And I get the handoff, and he will walk into the end zone. A 12 yard score for Reed Lisi will put the archers on top. 13 7 on our lead payment. Trust me, chicken for more. Yeah, once again, uh, you know, Wildcats really have no answer for Reed Lisi right now. The junior just kind of. Running wild here tonight after a 177-yard performance in the first round uh, last week against Hard Northern. But what an impressive drive. Credit the Archers. They took advantage of that uh, unsportsmanlike penalty, the late hit. And now they'll have a chance to uh, double up here, uh, Delta Jefferson, with the PAT. After that game, Kendrick Robinson will put a boot into it and it's off the goalpost. And a no good. That always seems to haunt you. And the postseason. We'll see if that one point will make a difference here tonight. 2 13 to play until halftime on our lead. Payment recipe ticket scoreboard at Antwerp 13, Delta Jefferson 7. You're on WOSN. Welcome back to Archer Field. Two Miller and Nate Stidham here in round two of the OHSAE postseason Division 7, Region 26. Antwerp leading 13 to 7 now on our lead payment recipe chicken scoreboard. And it's been all groundwork so far for Antwerp. A big run, uh, 48 yards by Artemis. This time it was a 14-yard run by Reed Leasey. The extra point was off the goal post, and that gets us at a 13-7 advance. Yeah, what an impressive drive. Remember, that drive started at their own uh, six-yard line, but uh, that did not phase them. That kickoff will go out of bounds. So Delphus Jefferson 
will have a few options here. They'll probably opt to take it at the 35-yard line. It could force the archers to re-kick five yards deep. They will have decent starting position, but I, I love the drive for a couple reasons. They won, you know, they had their backs to the wall. They did a great job of executing. They mixed in just enough pass to really kind of set up that run that was so effective. Then I thought they did a great job of trying to manage the clock, trying to take as much time out as possible. Before that ultimate touchdown, the play clock was down to two before they snapped it. Again, I think every second counts. Nelson Jefferson still had two minutes and 13 seconds to work with and a couple timeouts in the back pocket. Yeah, the Wildcats elect to attack. Now trailing for the first time tonight. It'll be a handoff and a big burst of yardage again for the Wildcat offense. Andrew Miller lowering his shoulders and moving the chain for Leland Smith first down. I tell you what, he's a fun guy to watch. You know, he's one of those downhill runners that punts awfully hard. He's able to uh, elude guys. He's able to get those yards after contact. But what a nice run, pick up of 11 yards. Another first down here for the Wildcats. A little bit more up-tempo approach by the Wildcat offense. And a handoff to Hurston. He's going to be shy of the midfield. He was met immediately and tripped up by a pair of Archer defenders. Are you a little surprised to see Douglas Jefferson keeping it on the ground with Two timeouts and just 90 seconds left before the break. Now this has kind of been their bread and butter. So right now, I think they're just going to go a little bit more tempo. They'll probably burn a timeout here if they come up short. I think if you're at court, you start looking at your timeout. Still with a minute 20 left. Still with two timeouts. I think maybe I would have looked at if you're at court, trying to get those two stops. And, hey, you got 60 seconds to work with. You're, you're going to kick it away anyways at halftime. Well, the one, the one thing that's clear right now for Duff, Jeff, they want to make sure this is the last possession of the first half. So they do, they want to try to leave Antwerp as little time as possible if they don't convert here on third down. Demon standing in the pocket. He has pressure. He'll roll out to the near sideline. He'll fire it to Bailey. Caught in bounds, but he steps on the sideline as he broke that tackle to know, yeah, in the stat column for Cody Bailey, but he did climb the ladder and to make a nice reception, as you can see now on our Charles River laboratory replay. Yeah, nice return by Bailey. And just again, he just caught that uh, sideline there. If not, he would have had the first down. So now decision time, fourth and two. I think you're going to go for it right here. But again, uh, Antwerp also has a couple timeouts and also some big play capability. So big fourth down conversion. Delta Jefferson, nine for 15 on fourth down this season. Miller will go in motion and Teeman keeps it himself. He's got enough for the first down and more to the 35-30 before Teeman is tackled another Leland Smith insurance first down, 42 seconds to play. And Delvin Jefferson, we're going to take a timeout. We'll take one as well. 13 7, Antwerp leading just before half here on WOSN. Time winding down here at Archer Field just before halftime. Delvin Jefferson trying to add a point to the scoreboard as they trail 13 7. Teeman will take the snap and the Wildcats will keep it on the ground. Shy of the 25-yard line on another handoff to the senior Cole Hurston. Clock continuing to run. Delvis Jefferson, one timeout remaining. And the up-tempo offense is a movement. Demon hits the snap, and again on the ground. It'll be to the 25 before Hurston is tackled. 20 seconds left, and Delvis Jefferson will take their final timeout. 20 seconds left here until halftime, 13-7. Antwerp leading. Are you a little are you a little surprised to see Delta Jefferson take that time out with still so much time left? Or is it just I think they, they, they had you around. right there and credit Antwerp. I, I think Delta Jefferson would try to maybe catch Antwerp uh, with maybe a couple extra DBs at time, trying to break off a long run before maybe take a couple shots at the end end zone. But that time uh, you know Antwerp defense came up big there in the trenches. Now at uh, third and three, certainly the clock now is a huge factor. The fact that we're down to uh, 20 seconds. And also remember Delta Jefferson with that being their last time out. The only way they can stop the clock is by a first down and then spiking it or getting out of bounds. But again, uh, right now they're on the uh, 25 yard line. This will be a 42 yard field goal attempt. I don't think we'll see that. They've got plenty leg in their kicker, but they're also looking at a 15-mile-hour win they would be kicking into. So right now, I think you're going to take maybe a couple shots here. 
you still got time to get a first down, get out of bounds, or spike the football. Third and four coming up. Two receivers at the top of the screen, two to the bottom. Teeman takes a snap. He's looking to the center of the field. He finds Scalp at the five, and he is extending and touchdown. 24-yard touchdown pass to Braylon Scalp, his fifth reception of the year. And just before the break, Delvis Jefferson, an extra point try away from taking the lead. Oh, what a play by Scalf. Watch it right here. This time, does a nice uh, crossing route there, catches it. The last four yards are on his own. He comes down on the Antwerp defender. I believe that was uh, Caden Winslow. He's able to reach the football across the plane before he was down. And right now, uh, and you got to appreciate that wearable with uh, Scout to know where he was and how close he was to the pylon or the goal line to make that extra effort in the extension. Scout, he kick it up and it's blocked, so the missed extra point will not haunt Antwerp for now. 13 13 just before the break. We'll return here on WOSN. Back here at Archer Field, Douglas Jefferson answers with a 28-yard touchdown pass. 24-yard touchdown pass from Trent Seaman to Braylon Scout. The fifth time that that duo has connected through the air. Scout made a phenomenal extension effort at about the two-yard line to break the goal line, and the extra point attempt was blocked. So back and forth first half, Skip. Skip, I, I, I'm here for it. It's been an exciting first half, and I think we're going to get even more of an exciting second half to come. Yeah, what an answer there by the Wildcats. You know, they went 65 yards in, in two minutes and uh, half a second. Again, uh, what an impressive drive and uh, what an impressive finish. And, and both these teams really leaving it all out there. What a fun game to watch here. As we uh, have 12.4 remaining in this opening half. I wonder if we're just going to split kick it here. Now we'll approach it Nearly kicked it out of bounds. It'll be scooped up by Antwerp just before going into the sideline. So they'll have two timeouts in nine seconds left to work with. What do you expect Antwerp to do here, Scoop? Well, I expect them to take a couple of shots here at least. You know, that they've got some weapons. They've got that big play capability. You've got a guy like uh, Landon Brewer that can go deep. But you also got a guy like Reed Leachney if uh, – Wildcats go to the type of three bet. Uh, he could certainly slip one, but it looks like they're going to be content going in tied up at the 13 at the half as they take a knee. But what a great first half here from Archer Field, but uh, kind of what we expected coming in. Both these teams are uh, duking it out. Great performance by uh, all these young men out here tonight. Least famous recipe chicken scoreboard. Antwerp 13, Delvis Jefferson 13. We'll step aside and come back for halftime here on WOSN. Back here at Archer Field at halftime, our least famous recipe chicken scoreboard. Delta Jefferson 13, Antwerp 13. It was a big drive late in that second half. Delta Jefferson was able to get the score, and they're going to get the ball back to start this third quarter. Jefferson has found himself in great position. Too. Yeah, no question about it. You know what they've done? They've shortened the game. They've made this now a 24-minute contest is you know, one of the things they want to do. The fact they had that impressive drive there, they got that two-minute drill, they executed, were able to knock things up, and now they'll get the football to start the, out the third quarter. So they really have uh, this uh, Antwerp team where they want them. And uh, a lot of uh, football left, but uh, certainly a great 24 minutes there for Delta Jefferson. Got yeah, started off in that first quarter. It was, you, you set it up perfectly, I think, or imperfectly, if you're an Antwerp fan. Every game leading up to this point, the first 11 weeks, Antwerp, first drive of the game, they drive down and score. That's what they do. Coming into the game, Alden is one interception. He doesn't throw interceptions. Well, what happens on that first drive? Delvin Jefferson picks them off. Antwerp doesn't score. And then Trent Seaman, he drives the Wildcats right down the field. Cap that drive off with a 28-yard scoring drive. And that really set momentum up for Jefferson. Carson Alden is able to answer the 48 run of his own, and that really sealed that back and forth electric first quarter. Yeah, you have to credit both teams. You know, Delphi Jefferson for getting that early stop, something no one's did to Antwerp in the first quarter all season long in their opening drive. Then they took the lead the first time Antwerp's been behind all season. And then uh, credit Antwerp, though, after throwing that early pick, after giving up an early touchdown, what do they do? They come back, they score consecutive uh, 
touchdowns on some impressive drives to take a lead, but just when you thought things were swinging Antwerp side, Delphus Jefferson, an impressive uh, two-minute drive there to close out that first half. And uh, what a great contest here. And uh, a lot of great football still come. Look at that big third down conversion that Delphus Jefferson got. It was about 50 seconds left in that first half. And you're thinking, okay, if you're Delphus Jefferson and you don't pick this up, this could be disastrous. You're going to give it back to him with two timeouts right around midfield. But Jefferson, they were able to bring themselves to the sideline after that timeout. They really dialed it in, and what a phenomenal play to go on by Braylon Scout. Yeah, you're exactly right. That was a phenomenal play there by Scout, who's such a tremendous athlete. Now, here's a guy that was all-conference football, not only on the offensive side of the football, but also the defensive side of the football and a special team. So he's certainly a special athlete, but I think you're right. The fact that they converted on that fourth down scenario that really kind of opened the door there for them to tie things up there deep in that first half. Here at halftime at Arthur Field, our scoreboard is provided by Lee's Famous Recipe, Chicken and Walpole, and Delva Patrol Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here, Stu. How about some first half set? Well, for Antwerp, they had 14 first downs compared to Delva's Jefferson 11. And the impressive thing was, Antwerp was able to rush the football for 200 yards on just 15 carries. So they had over 13 yards per crack, and that was all done by Altimus and Leasty. Those two had all 100 yards divided pretty equally amongst them. Meanwhile, Delphus Jefferson had 164 yards on 27 carries. That comes down to 6.1 yards uh, per attempt. Then up through the airways, uh, Antwerp had low advantage there, 12 for 17. Uh, 76 yards. Meanwhile, Delta Jefferson only threw it four times, but they completed all four passes for 48 yards. I think the telling stat in that first half, Nate, was the fact that those two turnovers by Antwerp. You know, one was on the initial drive. They were driving. The second one, they had the ball in the red zone early in that second quarter. If it wasn't for that, you know, the Antwerp offense really has been moving the football. You know, over yard yardage, you know, they've done an excellent job there. Of, uh, of really doing some good things there. But I think those two turnovers negated what could have been a very impressive offensive display there in that opening half. Winner of this matchup will continue on and head into the regional semifinals, the Division 7 and Region 26 bracket. All of Division 7 is going to turn into Saturday football next week. Go may or the top seed into that region, and they've got a good one. With Andrew Goboa tonight, winner of that game. We'll see LCC or Delta St. John's next week. The winner of this matchup is either going to find themselves against Wastefield Goshen or Gibsonburg. And I, I think there's a lot of people out there that are scratching their heads at what? Maybe a Delta Bowl in the regional finals? But they're still a couple of weeks away from that. But you've got to love the way these brackets are shaking out. It's postseason time. What better time to be here? Yeah, you see it right there. I think all four of those teams right there have a great shot of making it to that regional finals. This is a really a wide-open bracket. With that being said, all these coaches know this is a great opportunity. Antwerp has now won playoff games in each of the last three seasons, but they only have four ever playoff wins. So they're trying to do something they've never done here in Antwerp, get two playoff wins in the same season. Certainly they've got the talent to do it there. They've got their hands full this Delta Jefferson team that's playing their best football at the right time. We'll have to see how the second half transpires. We'll take a break, and we'll come back for kickoff in the third quarter. You're at Archer Field on WOSF. Welcome back to Archer Field, second half. Ready, ready for action. Scoot Miller and Nate Siddham here with the call. At Archer Field, winner moves on to the regional final. Regional semifinals next Saturday night against Waynesville to Goshen or Gibsonburg. Elvis Jefferson, they won the coin toss and elected to defer, so that is going to set up an answer pick to Elvis Jefferson. They'll switch time. Jefferson, they will operate left to right now on your viewing device. And, Scoop, what do you think they chatted about in that halftime break? Well, I think both coaches really had to preach, you know, keep grinding things out. That's going to be a game that's going to take 48 minutes to, to win. You're not going to do it in one quarter. So keep grinding on each plate. I'm sure the physicality was brought up by both coaches. The fact that 
got to keep uh, just getting off the football there in the line there down the trenches on both sides of the football. Again, uh, both these teams show that they can move the football. Defense really has to rise to the occasion right here. Uh, looks like Land Brew can try to kick things off. River will take it over to the 37 yard line and a quick catch and recovery for the Wildcats. They have 33, but they don't have that on the roster. So he's just going to stay 33 for now. Well, nice job of just protecting the football. You know, the swift kick, you're going to get good positions. Don't uh, get free there that time. Great job of just uh, covering it and snaking it up there. So right now, the Wildcats will start out in their own 38 yard line here, trying to regain the lead. Uh, Something they haven't had since that opening quarter. Elvis Jefferson found the end zone via a threat team and run and pass in that first pass. We have in that first half. Yeah, nice job by Miller there. He's able to uh, get some good yardage. Uh, he had 40 yards rushing in that uh, first half on 13 carries. But he's a guy that coming in tonight had over uh, 1,500 all-purpose yards. What a tremendous athlete he's been for the Wildcats. Gain a six on a first down. Teeman's going to keep it himself, and he's just going to get back to the line of scrimmage before being wrapped up and thrown down by an Antwerp defender. You know, that was Kendrick Robertson that time uh, coming off the edge there. And again, he's he's so physical. He lines up at the nose spot there. But that time, you saw his lateral quickness there. He's able to uh, pull him down there, trying to get to the edge. What a stop there. Brings up a third and two. Third down and three for the Wildcats. They need the 49 to move the chains. One running back in the backfield to the left of Teeman. Teeman keeps a snap. He'll go to midfield. He's going to get the first down and a little more to the Antwerp 47-yard line. A Leland Smith first down for the Wildcats. Yeah, credit to the Wildcats that time. Trent Teeman uh, comes up big there in the third down conversion, something they've done so well here tonight. And, again, this is the, uh, the MO they need. This is what they want to do, establish that running game, trying to shorten this game out. And again, we talked about it, Nate. Last week they had touchdown drives, 14 plays, 13 plays, nine plays. You know, they can take five, six minutes off the clock on one drive. They'd love to do that right here as we're two minutes in, and they are marching first and ten. It'll be a handoff on the sweep attempt to Miller. He's going to stiff arm one defender, move up the field across the 35. Miller. You can see on the Charles River Laboratory replay, just extended that right arm, shoved that defender into the grass and moved the chains. But now it's Miller kind of hobbling over to that Delvis Jefferson sideline. That'll be a big key to watch if Miller is unable to return to the contest. No, no question about it. Again, he's a guy that can really uh, make defenses uh, play Giannis. He's got the ability to run downhill, but he's also got the speed to get to the edges. But consecutive first downs here by Delphus Jefferson, they have the ball at the 34-yard line of the Archers. Hurston gets the handoff. He'll lower the shoulder and go inside the 30-yard line. Going to be stopped shy of the 25. Outside of Cole Hurston, Andrew Miller, and Trent Teeman, there's only three other Wildcats that have carried the ball for Delvis Jefferson offensively. You really got to hope that Miller is able to get back into the game in quickly for Delvis Jefferson. Yeah, it's kind of been a three-headed monster. As you look at the number of reps they've had this year, the number of rushes they've had, it's really been those three guys that have had probably 95% of their carry. So right now they're asking uh, Hurston and Teeman to uh, kind of carry the load. Hurston came into the game with just under 100 yards rushing, or 100 rushing attempts on the season. He's a guy that can definitely take that workload and put it on his back shoulder. Teeman is going to get tackled at the 25-yard line, going to bring up third down and one for the Wildcats under nine minutes to play here in the third quarter. 13-13. On our least famous recipe, chicken scoreboard, Teeman, he's going to keep it himself and take care of business. That'll be enough for another Leland Smith first down. Leland Smith Insurance Service is your first call for all your insurance needs. Yeah, great job once again uh, with the uh, third down conversion. Third time on this possession, they converted on third down. They now have the ball in the red zone as Teeman is able to uh, just run the snowplow up the middle. 
Seaman claps his hands, gets the snap, and he'll hand it off to Miller, who's back into the contest. He'll go inside the 10 for being shoved into the back and into the grass. And everybody in Delphus can breathe now. Andrew Miller has returned back to the backfield. Well, you knew he was going to be out long. You know, here's the guy that uh, really wants to be in there, the guy that's really uh, been carrying uh, this team uh, majority of the season, one of their captains. The senior comes up big right there, and again, uh, controlling first down to get eight big yards there. Ball resting just inside the 10-yard line of the Archers. Teeman gets a snap. He'll go back to Hurst, and he's going to break one tackle, but then wrapped up by a pair of Archers and thrown into the backfield. Coming through to make that tackle for Antwerp was Kendrick Robinson, the big 6'6 senior. Yeah, great penetration down there in the trenches that time. Also, Noah Bradbury in as well. Seaman's going to hurry to the line and keep it himself. He'll go to the five, and that's going to be enough for another Leland Smith first down. Devils Jefferson wasting no time, as you can see on that replay there. Yeah, that time they went with a lot of tempo, and again, uh, doing it all on the ground. Another big third down conversion, first and goal from the five. Seaman with a snap. He'll get behind Hurston, go to the goal line, and be knocked backwards before he can get into the end zone. Seaman wasn't far away, but just before he crossed into that end zone, he was met by a line of a black jerseys. Seaman right back at it quickly again, and this time he'll find a pay dirt, a one-yard score. For Trent Seaman to put the Wildcats back on top of the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Scoreboard. Touchdown sponsor, Dr. Underbrink at the eyesight of Lima and Delvis. Provide quality, comprehensive eye care to Lima, Delvis, and surrounding areas. Visit the eyesight of Lima.com for more information. A PAT try away from a seven-point advantage for Delvis Jefferson. What an impressive touchdown, and that time Trent Teeman just kind of fouls both his running backs there off the left side there. And again, impressive drive that took nearly five minutes off the clock here to start things out in the third quarter. Snaps back, and Scow will split the uprights to give Delvis Jefferson a 20-13 advantage with 7.06 to play on Elite's famous recipe chicken scoreboard. We'll be right back here on W.O. Delvis Jefferson leading 20 to 13 here on a WOSN round two of the Division 7 Region 26 tournament. Skip, scoop, a second. 2013 and Trent and he just found himself behind a blocker and it was an easy lane into the end zone. Yeah, they found a play that's really working for them. It's going to get them three, four, five yards of crack and they stayed with it. Uh, even down there in the red zone, they're able to. Uh, Really go right at the heart of that Antwerp defense. And again, impressive drive to start things out here in this second half as Delphus Jefferson retakes the lead 20 to 13. A rambunctious student section for Delphus Jefferson will cheer the ensuing kickoff that's going to be caught at the 15 yard line and advancing it all the way to the far side and advancing it all the way to the far sideline and met at the 25 yard line. Delphus Jefferson. Came out offensively, set the tone. Now it's up to Antwerp to battle back and answer that score. You, you, you haven't seen any team be able to take that extra step and a pull away Antwerp. They're going to need a big grind to prevent that from possibly happening. Yeah, and that's going to be tough to do, especially when Delphus Jefferson's special teams continues to force Antwerp into long fields. This is the best starting position Antwerp's had tonight. They'll beat at their own 25-yard line, but the Archers down a score. But you know this offense can strike quick and often. It is a quick screen pass out to the far hash, and it looked like it got batted down at the line of scrimmage. And that's going to fall incomplete to bring up second down and 10. It was just Artemis trying to find Lisi on a quick swing pass out of the backfield, and they couldn't they couldn't connect. Yeah, that's where they had a lot of success in that first half. Lisi had four receptions in that first half for 25 yards. Parker Moore had five receptions for 33 yards. Wildcats did a great job of trying to keep uh, the football out of Landon Brewer's hands. Uh, after he caught the first pass of the game, uh, he was held without a reception the rest of that first half. Carson Artemis delivers a play to the Antwerp Archer offense. Second down coming. Trailing 20 to 13. Artemis looking to pass. Now he's going to step out of the pocket and he's going to be swept up and still going. Broke off that initial contact. A little bit of yards after contact before ultimately being brought down by Jesse Long. I didn't know Artemis didn't look like anybody could bring him down. Yeah, look at this. This is a tremendous run. He should have been sacked right there for a loss of a couple yards, but look, he keeps the feet going. 
he's somehow able to turn that into a four yard gain there. So big time play there. It makes it a little bit more manageable here on third and five. Antwerp needs her own 35 to pick up the first down. Trailing by a touchdown, Odomus gets a snap. Lisi throws out of the backfield. Odomus gets rid of it just in time. Caught by Lisi, but he's stopped shy of the yard marker. There was quick pressure coming from the backside. Odomus just got it out in the nick of time, but Lisi wasn't able to break away from that initial defender. And that was Carter Agner wrapping him up and making that tackle. Yeah, great play there uh, by that Wildcat defense. They knew exactly where the chains were at that time. Altmus did a great job of, of staying in the pocket there as long as he could. He throws a strike to Leasty, but to Leasty uh, brought down on a one-one tackle, something that's awfully hard to do. Archer's going to be forced to uh, punt away in their initial drive here in the second half. Landon Brewer, a high snap. Brewer's got to pick it up. He's got nowhere to go. He tries to toss it. And it's going to go off the hands of a defender, still loose, and picked up by Delphus, and now back to the end zone. Bailey will take it to the house, but I don't know that you can advance that. That is just pure that chaos. Should be a, that should be a forward pass yeah. as well. And there you see it. They are going to rule it incomplete. Even though it's underhand, it went forward, so that's a forward pass. So it's just going to go down as an incomplete pass. The question is, can they rule that intentional grounding? Was there a receiver in the vicinity? We saw a couple linemen there. Yeah, I don't know that I've ever seen just an underhand backyard toss to an offensive lineman, but that's what we saw right there on our Charles River instant replay. As the officials, I believe, they're still trying to direct exactly where to place this ball, but nonetheless, Scoop, it's going to be Delphi Jefferson possession close, I believe, to yeah, Archer they, territory. Yeah, they could easily get intense with grounding there as there's not a vicinity, at least not a receiver in the vicinity that I could see, but I did not see any... Uh, flags on the play but again it's going to go down as an incomplete the question is will they get the ball at the original starting line starting uh, line of scrimmage which was about the 33 yard line or where they take over from where that pass was thrown so an incomplete pass and that was on fourth down. As it was a high snap on the punt attempt, it would have was Antwerp's first punt try of the evening. And it was a high snap and unable to be controlled. And Delvis Jefferson, and you're going to take over on downs. Now in absolute direct start that you wanted if you were Antwerp. Delvis Jefferson marched down the field, eliminated four minutes off of that game clock, put it into the end zone. And now Jefferson knocking on the door again. Watch it right there. A smart play by Landon Brewer not to take the sack there. And again, he knew that was a forward uh, pass. That's a big play, but a golden opportunity for uh, Delphus Jefferson here deep in Antwerp territory. Person gets the handoff, tries to break the edge. The ball is stripped out, and it looks like Antwerp falls on top of it, and they do. A flag is out on the place. So we'll wait to see that, but now the Charles River Laboratory replay, you can see Hurston went to go break that edge and it was just stripped out by Artemis and a big time turnover for Delvis Jefferson, Antwerp, able to capitalize now after turning it over on down. Well, we talked about at halftime, probably the biggest stat that first half was a turnover battle that uh, Delphus Jefferson was plus two, but that time Carson Altimus uh, just dug deep and made a play. Not only stripped it out, he's able to recover so right now, golden opportunity for Antwerp. They have momentum back on their side of the field. Sudden change for Antwerp. It'll be an RPO keeper for Aldemus. He's going to go to the 45, ripped up, picked up, and thrown out of bounds. Antwerp sideline wanted a flag. But that just looked like a good play, as you can see here on the replay. Yeah, right here, uh, Aldemus not easy to bring down. There you saw the knee was down. But again, you teach your guys to go with a whistle. That's going to be a pickup about four yards there in first down for Altimus. Yeah, that's not a play that you want to see your defender holding up on. you got to go to the whistle. Second down and six on a gain of four. Just above the four-minute mark in the third quarter. Back pair of turnovers on each side. Has been how the third quarter has gone, and what a run by Leasty. Shifted off tackle after tackle, and those yak yardage continue to add up for Leasty. Yeah, what a run by the junior. Reed Leasty once again. Again, 
they would love to get this guy 20 plus uh, carries a night. He's been so tough to bring down. And we talked about some of those halftime numbers where he came up awfully big. You know, he had over 100 yards there in that uh, first half. I'm sorry, he had 94 yards and five carries, 19 yards per crack. That's getting it done. Two men in the backfield now with Artemis as a receiver to the top and bottom of your screen. It'll be a handoff for Leasty. He goes to the 35-30 before being tackled just in bounds by a pair of Wildcats. Leasty, 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 feed me more, says the young man. Yeah, I love the adjustment here Antwerp's made. You know, the fact that uh, the Wildcats have such speed in the secondary. They've also dropped an extra DB back there. They're trying to beat them to run, and Delphus Jefferson is going to burn a timeout. We'll take one as well. Delphus Jefferson leading by a touchdown with 350 to play here in the third quarter. You're watching playoff football here on WOSN. 350 to play here in quarter number three. Scoot Miller and Nate Stidham here on WOSN. The Archers and Wildcats deadlocked in a fight for the regional semifinal next Saturday night. Fresh set of downs for the Archers. They continue to work right to left here in this third quarter. Altamitz gets his snap. He'll give it to Leasty once again. Leasty dragging a defender out to the 20 yard line. And again, Scoot Leasty, he was initially contacted at about the 26, maybe even the 27. And you can see here, just dragging him forward. He will not go down on initial contact. Well, look how hard he's run the football, how quick he gets to the hole, and how he just keeps the legs churning. He's got that look in his eye. Feed him the football right now. He's really controlling things. He picks up nine big yards and first down right there. Carson Altamus, a pitch out to the far sideline. Will be hauled in by his receiver. That is Parker Moore, the senior, with another reception as you look to see Antwerp now trying to get that passing game a little bit involved on first down. Well, it's, it's a nice play call because what it does, it, it try to, it's trying to force Delphus Jefferson to play it to even, not to load up in the box. And so it looked uh, for the Archers babe to come back for the run to, to Leasty one more time here. So they have a first and 10 in the red zone on the 17 yard line of the Wildcats. Antwerp's turned it over inside the red area one time tonight. I'll look to avoid that here. Leasty got through the initial line of scrimmage and then he was wrapped up by the ankles inside the 20 yard line. Called a gain of two on the play by Leasty. Remember, uh, you know, with uh, Antwerp not having their uh, number one kicker here tonight, I would think this is probably going to be four down territory, even though we're still in the third quarter, plenty of time. You would think that they're probably going to go four down uh, once they get in the red zone. Second seven coming up here for the Archers. Two receivers at the top and bottom, one back in the backfield. Aldemus gets a snap. He'll hold the read. He's going to move to the right side and find his way into the end zone. A 14-yard scamper for Carson Aldemus will put the Archers an extra point away from a tie contest. That's just a tremendous play once again by Carson Aldemus on the zone read. Uh, that time he read the uh, in perfectly, pulls the football out, uh, goes practically untouched around the right edge there. An impressive drive there by the Archers, and right now just an extra point away from tying things up here tonight for the third time. Now you look and see how big that fumble was just moments ago for Delvis Jefferson. The point after try is no good. He hung it left. That'll keep Delvis Jefferson on top of the least famous recipe chicken scoreboard, 20 to 19 with 2.14 to play here in the third quarter on WOSN. 14-yard touchdown run for Carson Aldemus with 2.14 left to play here into the penultimate quarter. We'll put a one-point advantage on the scoreboard for Delvis Jefferson after just minutes ago. Scoop, it looked like Delvis Jefferson after an opening drive touchdown to start the second half and a fumble or a turnover on downs. Jefferson was knocking on the door to put this game away. Nope, here come the Archers. Yeah, you're seeing a lot of heart on both sides of the field here tonight. Uh, Antwerp had their backs to the wall there. Uh, after uh, turning or basically losing on downs there, they had that bad snap on that fourth down. We're not able to punt the football away. But the Archer defense uh, made a play, and then the offense came right back with an impressive drive, capped off by that uh, nifty 17-yard run by Ultimus on the zone read. And only an extra point separates the two here as we near the two-minute mark of this third quarter. 
The extra point try was missed on the last try by Kendrick Robinson. So that gives us our one point differential on our least famous recipe chicken scoreboard. Teeman and Hurston in the backfield. Teeman keeps it himself. He's going to get to the line of scrimmage, and that is it. That front four, uh, that archer defense stood tall and allowed nowhere to go for Trent Teeman. Yeah, right now, this is where uh, they're going to have to make their hay here, try to control uh, first down. And at that time, uh, just a very short gain, maybe a, a half a yard there. But again, nice job there in the trenches by that uh, Antwerp line. There you see a good look at the uh, crowd there. Uh, from Antwerp, been treated a lot of great football this season. 11-game winning streak on the line right here. Teeman with a handoff to Miller, and he's stuffed again at the 35-yard line. Nowhere to go. Andrew Miller trying to run that jet sweep, turn it up, and he had absolutely no direction as there is a, an archer down on the field late to get up, holding his foot. So we'll step aside and uh, take a break while they tend to the injured Antwerp Archer. 126 to play in the third quarter. Delvis Jefferson 20, Antwerp 19. Here on Two, one. Welcome back to Archer Field playoff football here on WOSN. The injured Antwerp Archer was Kendrick Robinson. He has helped off to the field with or to the sideline with some assistance, and that is a big piece of the puzzle that you take away for Antwerp hunkering down that offensive line at center, and he's the backup kicker. So now Antwerp, they're going to have to find something in their kicking game if he's unable to return. Team and looking to pass, and it is batted down, looking for his intended target just across midfield. And that was a dangerous ball thrown into a lot of coverage, as you can see on the Charles River Laboratory replay. Yeah, that time uh, Antwerp dropped seven guys into coverage, so he was certainly trying to force the issue there across the middle. And a uh, great job there by that Archer defense. You know, after uh, cutting it to the deficit to one, their defense comes up with a huge three and out. And now uh, the Wildcats will have to punt the football away. Jefferson will punt it with that 15 mile an hour win, and he's going to get a high snap. Scalf can't control it. Archers pick it up at the 20, and now the ball's out once again. Antwerp will fall on it at the 20. And I'm not even surprised, Scoop. It has been anything you can do, I'm going to do worse or better tonight for both sides. And we see it again, each team with a high snap and just discombobulation all over the place. Antwerp now with a chance to take the lead as they're right outside of the red zone. Yeah, that was almost the same scenario that Antwerp went through uh, four or five minutes ago. This time the Wildcats return the favor. We'll see if that Wildcat defense can come up big like the Archers did. But a golden opportunity for Antwerp to retake the lead as we near the one minute mark of quarter three. He snapped it just before I could say that Scalf needs a perfect snap and you could not ill afford an error. But Jefferson, they find one there. Artemis gets a snap. He's gonna be pressured in the backfield. Five jerseys there to surround Artemis. He's unable to be brought down, but a play going nowhere. Daniel Myers, Carter Agner, and Moore in there to make the stop. Well, both these teams continue to throw punches at the other, and that's gonna be a huge tackle for loss there. Gonna bring up a second 14. So again, you know, who can control first down is certainly gonna weigh huge. That time the edge belongs to the Wildcats. Second and long coming up. Loss of four on that sack. Artemis looking for the screen pass. He's gonna find Leasty at the 25 and tackled and shoved into the Antwerp sideline. Clock will continue to run as the play was blown dead before being shoved out of bounds. Clock at 17 seconds. That's likely the last play here in the quarter, if I had to guess, Scoop. Yeah, nice stick that time by Carter Agner, the sophomore second team all-conference linebacker. And that will do it for the third quarter. What a good one it's been. I wouldn't go anywhere. This fourth quarter is going to be one for the ages. Three quarters in the books, one more to go. Delvis Jefferson, they trail 20, or they lead 20 to 19 on Ali's famous recipe chicken scoreboard here on WOSN. Welcome back to WOSN, start of quarter number four. Division seven, region 26, regional quarterfinal. The winner moves into the regional semifinals next Saturday evening. Third down coming for the Wildcat offense, for the Antwerp offense. Working left to right 
at the Jefferson 23-yard line, holding on to a one-point advantage. Aldemus works to his left, now cuts it back to the right, to the near sideline, he's got some room. He's at the five, extends for the pylon, and he is shy. He needed 23, and they give him 22. Now they give him the touchdown. A late signal, but nonetheless, a touchdown run again for Carson Aldemus. What a play. Yeah, once again, he just made a play on his own. Uh, that time, they, they had uh, three receivers on that left side. Great coverage. He cuts it back to the opposite side, and once they do, he just makes a football play. Somehow he's able to stretch the football across the line, and now Antwerp will line up to go for two to try to make this a seven-point contest. Yeah, remember Kendrick Robinson, their starting center and kicker, left with an injury. Snaps back to Aldemus. He's looking to pass. He goes to the corner of the end zone. Caught and good. Landon Brewer will make the two-point conversion try successful, and that will give Antwerp a seven-point advantage on our Leland, on our least famous recipe chicken scoreboard. We'll take a break. 11.48 to play, fourth quarter. Delvis Jefferson trailing 27-20 here on WOSN. 23-yard touchdown run for Carson Aldemus will put Antwerp on top, 27-20. to 20. Dr. Unterbrink at the Eyesight Alima and Delphus provide quality, comprehensive eye care to Lima, Delphus, and surrounding areas. Visit the eyesightoflima.com for more information. And a big thanks to the Eyesight of Lima and Delphus for being our touchdown sponsor in tonight's contest. And it's been a lot of touchdowns with Carson Aldemus' name written down beside it. Yeah, you know, we've talked about his arm coming in with over 7,000 passing yards to his career uh, right now, but it's been his legs and his really his intelligence uh, out there that's made the difference. Oh, a block in the back penalty coming. Scalf is going to bring the kickoff return all the way to the 45, but you, you think that it may have been helped out by a block in the back, as you can see on a Charles River Laboratory replay. Here it comes. That a big block in the back, and I don't know, that looked like a clean look by Cody Bailey, but I'm not the official, and the official says you got to go backwards, and that'll be the third penalty on Delvis Jefferson. Yeah, that's a big penalty right there. Instead of having a first down on the 46-yard line, excellent starting position, that's going to take it all the way back to about the 12-and-a-half-yard uh, line here. So once again, uh, that's a huge break there for the Archers, but the Wildcats uh, – Facing a little adversity here. Yeah, they'll, they've been from behind, fought back nicely in an opening half. We'll see what they can do after trailing for the first time here in the second half. Delva Jefferson will send their offense out. If you're looking for some Christmas gifts, looking for the perfect gift for an out-of-town sports fan, WOSN can now be streamed anywhere in the world online on Roku and Apple TV for a $100 annual donation. Give the gift of hometown sports for the holidays. Sign up on app.wosn.tv or by downloading our Roku and Apple TV apps. First down and 10 for the Wildcats, trailing by a touchdown with under 12 to play here in the final quarter of regulation. Teeman, the RPO keeper, he's got a hole into the 30, still going to the 35 before being tripped up and tackled. What a bolster to speed for Leland Smith, first down. Oh, what a big time run there by Trent Teeman, uh, right through the teeth of that Antwerp defense. Again, he's a guy coming in with over 600 yards, and uh, he has a big run right there. Gets the ball out near the 40-yard uh, line, but watch it right there. Nice cut back there. Does a great job of uh, found his blockers, protects the football. Huge run there by the uh, senior. And in motion, that is Bailey. It'll be a handoff from a team, and Miller makes a man to miss. He's at the 50, still going into Archer territory to the 40 for ultimately being wrapped down. Andrew Miller turning on the Jets and sprinting to another Leland Smith first down. Now not much of a hole there, but there you're going to see he's finally brought down there by Landon Brewer, but not before another big gainer by the Wildcats that takes the ball into Archer territory. So two big plays here. And right now, uh, Delphus Jefferson on the move here. Trying to answer that impressive uh, Antwerp touchdown and two-point conversion. Yeah, Landon Brewer just grabbed a jersey and went along for the ride. Teeman pulls it out at the very last second. Moves to the 40, tackle it at the 36-yard line. Teeman, you can see it coming on the instant replay scoop. He held that ball to the very last second. Miller, he turned back. He's like, hey, where's the ball? 
Teeman, he says, get out of my way and block. You're right, Miller. Uh, Miller probably had uh, five of those eight yards before Teeman pulls it out and gets the uh, rest. But, again, uh, a heady play there by the senior quarterback. And, again, the Wildcats starting to control first down. Second and two coming up. Look for the run to the right side as they'll move Agner and Voorhees to the right side of the scrimmage. Miller is going to take the handoff. He'll find those two blockers, make a move to the 35, down to the 30, still going to the 25 and into a herd of Archer defenders, but another Leland Smith first down. Feed me more for this Jefferson rushing game. Yeah, and again, uh, that's a play they had success with in that first half. You know, that you saw them uh, move uh, the two guys on the shift to the uh, strong side. And again, they have an unbalanced line, but I'm not really seeing Antwerp adjust to that. And then when you pull a blocker, that gives you a huge uh, numerical advantage and the Wildcats take advantage. Another first down, this time ball resting on the 24-yard line. Receiver in motion, Scalf, he'll step away from Team and Team just gonna fall forward for a gain of two on that play. And it's been nothing but RPO really on both sides of the ball offensively. Yeah, you just wonder when the Delta Jefferson's waiting to hand the ball off on that uh, jet sweep to uh, Braylon Scoff there. Because right now, you know that Archer defense is really keying in on Trent Teeman and certainly Andrew Miller. Now, Scalf go out to the top of your screen. Bailey will motion from the bottom of your screen and an illegal procedure. No, they're going to go offside defense. Antwerp gets their second penalty, and it's not too often you see that play blown dead that early before the snap. Well, that time it was encroachment, so there was no choice but to blow it dead. But uh, but again, uh, you know, both teams have really done a great job of, of playing clean. But again, those pre-snap penalties, you just want to avoid those like the plague. And that's really going to make this uh, a little bit more manageable here. Second and five coming up for the Wildcats as they now have the ball in the red zone. Only five combined penalties between each side. Two receivers at the bottom of your screen. Seaman gets a high snap, pulls it again, but he's met in the backfield. That was a perfect read by Seaman, but that was an even better play by the Antwerp defense. Yeah, that time uh, Seaman had the right read, but either way they were kind of uh, bad math there. It was that time Antwerp uh, snuck a couple guys up in the box, or that time they really stacked up in the box. They had all the gaps filled and just no chance for anything on the ground that time. So great hold there. And now it's going to bring up a, a third down and six after a loss of one on that play. Empty backfield for Teeman. Miller will go into motion. Teeman rolls out to his right. Pop pass caught inside the 10. Hold in by a Wildcat receiver, and that'll move the chains. A Leland Smith first down on the Jefferson reception. Holding it in was Cody Bailey for the Wildcats. Now, once again, Trent Teeman just doing a Great job there leading this offense. He's so smooth and so poised back there. And once again, he drops a dime there in a huge conversion on third down. Teeman comes in hitting over 60% accuracy on his throws on the season. Teeman keeps it himself once again. He'll break one tackle, but he's going to be met on the edge of that defensive line. Making the tackle was Cyrus Gale, the junior, stepping in to make the play after the pickup of four for the Wildcat offense. And remember, the Wildcats can get a first down without getting a touchdown. They have to get to the one for the first down. Teeman's going to get a direct snap and go inside the five. You can almost almost look like Teeman was moving before that ball was snapped, or he, he had that one synchronized very well. We'll see if they go back to what they did so well in that opening drive of the third quarter. We do have an archer down on the field that will stop play here. Can't tell who it is exactly on the far side of the field. But we will step aside. No, we'll keep it here. And they're going to move them on over to the sideline. The injured archer is Xander Smith. The junior, it looked like, just got his ankle tied up and didn't feel too well. And he's going to be helped off to the sideline. Yeah, Smith, a first-team uh, Green Meadows Conference performer. So they want to try to get him right back out there as soon as possible, but do you wonder if Teeman's just going to keep it and foul his blockers right here? From the four, Jefferson needs three. Teeman keeps it himself, moves to the goal line, and waited for the signal. They say he is short. Teeman needed four, and he got about three and a half. As you can see here, he's 
just shy of that goal line. Big, big opportunity coming. Yeah, nose of the football probably on the three-inch line. And, again, we're going to see more or less the same. And this time, Teeman takes it into the end zone. And he caps off an impressive drive. And Delphus Jefferson just an extra point away from tying things up here with seven minutes to play. The eyesight of Lum and Delphus, the touchdown sponsor of tonight's contest. Dr. Underbrink at the eyesight of Lima and Delphus provide quality, comprehensive eye care to Lima, Delphus, and surrounding areas. Visit the eyesight of Lima.com for more information. A penalty flag is down, as I'd imagine that'll be after the play. So that would be a penalty likely enforced on the kickoff. They don't they wouldn't enforce that on the field goal. Boy, this is going to be interesting right here. That's going to move the football half the distance to the goal. And being a one-point game, you wonder, with the success they've had with team and run the football behind his blockers, will they go for two here from the uh, one-and-a-half yard line? But uh, they, may, uh, they may assess that on the kickoff, decline it here. We'll see what happens. And with Antwerp merely having zero kicking game, at this point with the injury to Kendrick Robinson. You would think it'd be a good opportunity to maybe get that extra point somewhere, but the Wildcats will keep the extra point unit out on the field. The snaps back, Scalf will split the uprights and make it 27 all on our least famous recipe chicken at scoreboard with seven minutes left into the fourth quarter. 27, 27 here on WOSN. One. Welcome back to Archer Field here on WOSN, Division 7, Region 26 tournament action. 27-27 after Trent Tiemann finds the end zone on a one-yard touchdown score. Brought to you by the Eyesight of Lima and Delphi Scoop. I, can we add like 40 more minutes onto that scoreboard? I don't want to go anywhere. This has been a blast, and what a game coming down to the wire here to extend your season. Yeah, and credit both these programs. They're leaving everything out there, and there you see the, uh, the, the penalty. Unsportsmanlike conduct on Antwerp being uh, marked off here on the kickoff. So that's going to uh, allow the Wildcats to kick off from the 45-yard line. You would think they're probably just going to kick this one out of the back of the end zone and force uh, Antwerp into a long field. This is not the first time that Elvis Jefferson has kicked from an opponent's 45. I saw that in week 10 following a couple of personal foul penalties after a play. that It set up for a very weird look to say the least, and it was a touchback, as you could imagine. Jefferson going to kick it away from the Antwerp 45. I would expect nothing less than Braylon Scalf to boot this into the back of the end zone. Scalf, oh, a little short onside kick, and the ball screws loose, and Jefferson falls on top of it. What a phenomenal play call and a gut-wrenching move by Ben Rarig. Wow. Well, you have wow. to love the call, the fact that, uh, you know, when you onside kick, from the Antwerp 45-yard line. Even if you don't recover, you're still forcing Antwerp into a fairly long field. So instead of uh, kicking it deep, they risk maybe 15 yards and they go for broke and they get it. And now all momentum on the Jefferson uh, side of the field as the offense is back there. And you wonder how tired this Antwerp defense might be after that long drive. Uh, that uh, was finished by that one-yard run by Teeman off the left tackle. I was, I was, I had that feeling coming through me, Scoop. I just had something came through me, and I said, "Onside kick, onside kick," and then they actually did it. What the the amount of guts that it takes to make that a play call for Ben Rarick right now at this point in the season? It's win or go home, and you love to see a head coach putting that trust and that confidence in his team, and it paid off for yeah. Douglas Jefferson. They credit, just have to credit answer. Credit Coach Rarick there, the fact that, uh, you know, those are things that you can always second guess after the fact, but uh, he certainly had a lot of confidence in his guys. And, and again, uh, you know, mathematically, not a bad move there because you kick it out of the end zone, Antwerp starts on the 20, you onside kick. At worst, you're probably going to start on about the uh, 35 or even 30-yard line. So really uh, a, a smart play there, well executed. And again, the special teams for the Wildcats is coming up big. They not only have uh, forced uh, Antwerp into long field, but uh, they now have recovered an onside kick, and now the offense can put them back on top. A senior class that came in with four wins prior to this season, and Elvis Jefferson is trying to punch their second 
Playoff win tonight. Seaman, he's got a big run again down to the red zone. Trent Seaman all day with the RPO, another big chunk of yardage for the Wildcat O. And what a weapon to have Andrew Miller. Watch it right there. You have to honor that fake, but look at the job that Seaman does pulling the football out. He's able to get nine yards there in first down. So once again, uh, the Wildcats controlling first down, and they have the ball uh, resting uh, right on the 20-yard line here looking at a second and one. Six and a half to play in the fourth quarter. Delvis Jefferson, 27, Antwerp, 27. Seaman in an empty backfield, and two receivers to his left. He'll bring a man in motion from the right side, and it'll be to the 20. It's going to be Miller. He'll cut to the 15 before being grabbed by the shorter pads and thrown into the grass again by Landon Brewer. We've seen him flying a little bit of everywhere defensively tonight for the Archers. Yeah, and credit to the Wildcats. They continue to uh, to keep the ball moving here. And again, what they're doing is shortening the game. You know, every play here is going to take another 35 seconds off the clock. And right now they're doing a great job with uh, clock management, trying to shorten this game up. They do have another first down in the red zone with an opportunity to retake the lead here. I think if you're able to avoid penalties or a turnover, you're at least in field goal position. If you were Delvin Jefferson, lower the shoulder, Trent Seaman rolling over his opposing counterpart in Carson Aldemus. Seaman saying, hey, I can run the ball and I can lower that stick too. I tell you what, uh, Seaman's such a heady player out there. That time he, he comes back to the short side there on the counter. He's able to get positive yards. So right now, uh, second and eight, ball resting on the 13-yard line. The Archers, uh, remember, certainly uh, well within field goal territory right now, but you know Delphus Jeff would love to put seven on the board right here. Jefferson at the Archer 13. Clock continues to trickle away down to the five-minute mark. Teeman has got a running back to his right hip. Miller, he takes the handoff, works to the near sideline. He's going to be hit before he can get to the 10 and a driven out of bounds, making that tackle for the Archer defense was Caden Winslow. Yeah, nice job by the sophomore uh, Winslow that time, uh, not letting uh, the Wildcats uh, get around the edge. So a pickup of a yard that takes the ball down to the 12-yard line of Antwerp. But again, uh, Antwerp defense, they've made some big plays tonight, but they certainly have their backs to the wall here. We'll see if they can come up with on third here in a long six. The biggest possession of Delvis Jefferson season has come to this point. Miller and Seaman, another RPO and a beautiful block. Seaman, he's got a break to the end zone, and he's in. 12-yard touchdown score for Trent Seaman, led by a beautiful block in the Wildcats lead. Well, watch it right there. You have to honor that fake to Miller, and uh, Seaman does a great job pulling out. He gets the edge, and he goes in untouched. So great job by the Wildcats. They took advantage of some great special teams play on the onside kick. And the offense does their part. And once again, Delphus Jefferson retakes the lead. Huge PAT coming up. What a big pancake block for Tanner Voorhees. Also, the tight end buried his defender into the grass. Now Scalf, he's going to go out and attempt the biggest extra point try of the night. Snaps back, kick is up. It's got plenty of air, and it's right down the line. 34-27 with 4.53 to play here at Archer Field. Delvis Jefferson leading here on WOSN. 34-27, Delvis Jefferson leading on the least famous recipe chicken scoreboard. Trent Seaman, a 12-yard quarterback run, finds himself into the end zone. The fourth score tonight for Seaman. He's found three, three on the ground, four on the ground, and also found Scalf through the air, 34-27 scoop. Archers backs up against the wall now in the final five minutes of potentially their season. Yeah, that's a big gut check come up for Antwerp, but again, this is a team that uh, has kind of been there through the mill. You know, they had that big playoff win a year ago against Patrick Kennedy right here at Archer Field. I think that gave some confidence. Of course, that impressive win last week, but they've been tested here tonight. That time they recovered the squib kick. They're going to land on about the 34-yard line. So not bad starting position here for the Archers. Still with plenty of time as we're just down to the five-minute mark. That was Camden Fuller that fell on top of that kickoff. Is nearly another disastrous special teams effort for Antwerp. Delvis Jefferson got that touchdown, and then a personal foul had the kickoff from the Antwerp 45, and they onside kicked it. 
Picked it up and then later scored. And now Jefferson leads by a touchdown with under five to go. Artemis in the backfield. He's got two receivers to the top and bottom of the screen. One back in the backfield. That is Reed Leasty. Artemis gets a snap. He'll give to Leasty. And he's met immediately at the line of scrimmage. Nowhere to go for Leasty. In there to make that a big play with Daniel Myers, the senior, in there again. Oh, what a tremendous job down the trenches here by the Wildcats. You've got to give these guys a lot of credit. They've been battling all night long, but uh, their defensive line of Tanner Voorhees, Daniel Myers, Jesse Long, and uh, Zach Hawks have been lights out tonight. Big stop there, a gain of just two on first down. Artemis, the senior. Gets a snap, he stands at the 40, looking to his left. He'll now go down the middle of the field. He airs it out, and he'll overthrow everybody in the vicinity. You've seen now multiple times, Artemis trying to go for that deep shot and just nowhere to go, and he took a shot at the end of that play by Daniel Myers. Yeah, nice job that time. Great pressure there from Jesse Long there, the senior. And the Ultimus trying to uh, shake off the cobwebs here as he's looking at third and eight, one of the few times tonight Antwerp's tried to go on a vertical route. And once again, the speed in the secondary by the Wildcats uh, had that well defended. Third down and eight for the Archers. Twins at the top and bottom. Artemis, he'll get the snap. It was a low snap, looking again down the sideline. He's got a man at the 20 and a near one-handed grab. In and out of the hands, you can see how close this catch was here, Scoop. Yeah, there was only one option on this play right here. They were going to Landon Brewer on the go route. Remember, Brewer came in with over 1,000 receiving yards on the season. He's been held to two catches and 15 yards tonight. But that time, they went for broke, and they just about came up huge. And now you wonder if the Archers might go for it here, fourth and eight. Now you have to go for it, four minutes. Left trailing by seven, but if you don't get it, it is a big turn of events. Artemis will await the snap. Archers must get eight. Artemis standing, he's looking, he fires, caught for the first down into the hands of Hunter, or Landon Brewer, excuse me. And that was as easy as you could draw it up. France were get just past the line again and haul it in for the Leland Smith first down. Uh, what a big time uh, pitch and catch from Altimus to Brewer, and Brewer comes up big there. He needed eight, he got about 10. Huge conversion on fourth down. The ball now in uh, Wildcat territory at the 49-yard line of Delphus Jeff. Antwerp trailing by a touchdown. Artemis awaiting the snap, keeping it to himself. He makes a man to miss to the 50. Spin move at the 45. He gets past Hurston and then wrapped up and tackled at the 45-yard line. Cole Hurston, he got juked out of his shoes. What a spin move by Artemis, as you can see here on our Charles River instant replay. Ah, what a big time fake and what a Whoop. big time move. There you see the complete 360. And he's just tracked down from behind from uh, Tanner Voorhees. That probably saved a touchdown, but another first down for the Archers. Shotgun look for Artemis standing at midfield. He'll air it out again, tipped and intercepted. Picked off by the Wildcats, it is Hurston at the 35. Second interception of the game for Carson Artemis and Scoop. That's more than he threw in the last 11 weeks. Yeah, that's unbelievable. And that time the ball just a little bit high there. I think that was thrown to Parker Moore, went off his fingertips. But uh, a pretty well thrown ball there by Altimus, but it did have a lot of juice on it. And what can you say about that Wildcat defense? Uh, once again, they come up with a big play, another big pick. And now the offense would love to milk things out with uh, three and some change remaining. Antwerp still does have all three timeouts, but they're going to have a tougher time trying to stop this uh, Wildcat offense than so effective running the football. Look like for the first time tonight, Antwerp really got out of what they had dialed up on their game plan. Miller, he's going to be tackled in the backfield, I don't believe he was able to get to the line of scrimmage. As there is a archer late to get up, but he's helped up off of the grass, so that'll continue. I know that will stop the clock as Antwerp is gonna take their first time out here. So we're coming down to the final wire scoop. Three minutes left to go, a touchdown advantage for Delvis Jefferson. You just get that a big interception. What's Ben Rarig saying to his guys right now? 
Right now, he's saying we have to move the football, guys. We we have to uh, move the chains here. You know, we cannot just uh, sit on this seven-point lead. So they're going to have to really do a good job executing some blocks. And again, they'd love to do on the ground, force Antwerp to use those final timeouts. But right now, if uh, the Wildcats can come up with a first down, that's going to be tough math for this Antwerp uh, football team. So far in the fourth quarter, Trent Tiemann has found two rushing touchdowns. Had one in the third as well. Tiemann has put the Wildcats on his shoulder blades here in the second half. And he is three minutes away from marching his Wildcats into a regional semifinal next Saturday night. Tiemann, empty set backfield. Nobody to the bottom side of your screen. Miller will come into motion. Tiemann keeps it himself. He'll work to the Jefferson sideline, tackled at the 34, making a stop for the Archers was Dane Scholl, the sophomore. Yeah, another big play by that Archer defense, and right now they have to come up big. You know, this is not four down territory, you would think for the Wildcats, unless they can get maybe fourth in a yard or so. So right now the play of the ball game coming up for the Archers, and there you see them huddled uh, on their side of the field, trying to draw something up here for third and six, and a must stop situation for the Archers. Just talked about it multiple times, especially in the pregame, how impressive it was that Carson Aldemus came into this game attempting 250 pass attempts and just one interception to 30 touchdowns. It's, it's almost something you're like, okay, that's not even a possibility. He's going to take care of the ball. And really on both interceptions tonight, they've been high balls, they've been hard thrown balls, and they've been tipped right into the hands of Jefferson defenders. They've they played out of their mind, and they've quickly erased that plus 17 turnover differential that Antwerp carried into this contest. Yeah, these are two tremendous quarterbacks that have gone toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe here tonight. And third down coming up here for the Wildcats. Empty backfield. Wildcats need six. Team will keep it. He's got five and more up to the 44-yard line. A Leland Smith Insurance first down. Leland Smith Insurance Services, your first call for all your insurance needs. Wildcats keep on churning, and that clock is going to stop, I believe. Well, Antwerp can't stop it any more time, so it will just stop so they can set the chains, and it's off and running. Antwerp, no more opportunities to stop the clock. Yeah, right now, if you're uh, Jefferson, just hang on to the football. You know, really, they can uh, just basically uh – Couple first downs, you're moving on. Right now, they just got to hold on the football for another uh, four plays here to milk this thing out. Right now, doing a great job of clock management. They snapped it about one on the play clock. Ball's out. Fumble. Oh. And uh, Antwerp's going to fall on top of it. And wow, Archer's ball. That ball came out at the very last second. Hurston almost looked like he popped it out himself as he comes off of that tackle. Ball comes out at midfield and then falling on top of it for Antwerp. And I just am wow. so surprised they did just try to milk that out, the fact that Antwerp has no timeouts. But now with a couple minutes to go here, remember each play is going to take about, uh, you know, 45 seconds by the time you get the tackle and by the time uh, you snap the football. But as you can see, that individual walking off onto the sideline, that's Reed Leasty. And I don't, we talked about how important it was just moments ago when you lose your kicker in Kendrick Robinson. You take Leasty out of the contest for Antwerp. If you're looking at a whole different ball game, you hope to see if he can come back, hopefully, after this very next play. He just have to take a one-play breather. Well, Antwerp needs 53 yards. They need 50 on this drive to get the touchdown. They need three more on the two-point conversion to go for the walk-off win. We'll see what happens here. Altimus, uh, you give him too many shots, he's going to burn you. Altimus trying to burn that defense. He pump fake and down the sideline over the head of Brewer and into the sideline incomplete. The pump fake trying to get that Wildcat defense to bite. Wasn't happening. The ball was incomplete. Well, you're seeing Antwerp here in crunch time. They're trying to uh, look a little bit heavier at uh, Landon Brewer to get him untracked. And that time they, they had him uh, matched up one on one there on the sideline. But just the fact they ran that to the short side of the field, just not a lot of real estate to work with. You know, that time, uh, even if he caught that football, I think he was going to be out of bounds. So good hold there on first down, but still 2 0 2 left. 
Antwerp with no timeouts remaining either. They have no ways to stop it. Aside a first down or getting out of bounds. Quick pass over to the far sideline, caught and tackled inbounds. The heads up tackle by the Wildcats, Trent Tiemann. They're able to keep him in bounds, and the clock will continue to run on a gain of seven. Yeah, that's a huge tackle. That's going to force uh, Antwerp to go without a huddle here. Clock down to 140 and counting. 34 27, Wildcats lead. Tiemann trying to direct the defense. Antwerp takes a snap, and it's a quick pass out of bounds. As that will be enough to stop the clock and move the chain for a Leland Smith first down. 90 seconds to go, no timeouts remaining for Antwerp. Oh, that's they a can't great, afford a mistake. Great catch by Camden Fuller. That ball was kind of thrown behind him and a little bit low. Not only did he catch it, but he knew where the chains were. Big first down conversion there on third down for Antwerp. Two receivers at the bottom of your screen, one back in the backfield. Artemis looking to pass, and it is caught at the 30. And you talk about climbing the ladder. You can see on the Charles River replay, that was another high ball out of the hands of Artemis. Yeah, great protection that time, and uh, what a tremendous catch there. And again, another first down, so still plenty of time as we hit the uh, 115 mark here, this final stanza. And remember, if Antwerp finds the end zone, they are down to their third string kicker. Will they kick it or will they go for two? Artemis scrambles out of the pocket. He finds a man just in bounds. And that is hauled in. I believe that is. Nice job by Camden for that time. Yeah. He knew exactly where he was. And the smart play here, just getting out of the bounds here, stopping the clock. That'll be a first down there for the Archers. Ball resting on the 13 yard line. So right now, still plenty of time. You're going to be able to take four shots here with a minute four remaining. And again, you have to execute. The field gets a little bit tighter right here. And you get down in the red zone. Following the Caden Winslow reception, the Archers set up with a fresh set of downs at the 13 of Delphus. Trailing by a touchdown with 64 seconds to play. Artemis takes the snap. He's looking to pass once again to the sideline in and out of the hands. This time of his intended target. And that'll stop the clock at exactly one minute to go. That pass was intended for Landon Brewer. Boy, they had the look they wanted. That's one of those timing routes that Brewer did a great job of kind of pinning his man. But the football got on him maybe a split second sooner than he's expected. But uh, Landon Brewer would be the first to tell you that's a pass that uh, he could come up with. But uh, that's a huge break for the Wildcats as we hit the one minute mark. Jefferson uh, clinging to that uh, one touchdown score. Second and 10 coming up. Remember, Antwerp can get a first down. Uh, they need to get to the three to do so. I just can't stop thinking about the kicking situation for Antwerp if they're able to get it into the end zone. Artemis airing it out. It's a quick pass out to the far sideline into the hands of the running back, Leasty. Leasty back into the contest after leaving moments ago with an injury. Well, that time, Leasty, instead of risking uh, getting tackled in bounds, he steps out of bounds. But uh, what that's going to do is going to bring up a third down and long situation. We're going to call it third and eight, ball resting on the 11-yard line. And so, again, obvious four-down territory, but uh, you would like to convert here in third down, not have to go for it on fourth. Artemis with Leasty to his left hip. He's got two receivers. And Fuller and Brewer to the far side. Leasty looking to that far side. He's got Brewer at the pylon. He extends. And. Well, that's that play they just had moments ago where they uh, went off Brewer's hands. And this time he comes up awfully big there. Landon Brewer touchdown. And it is a touchdown. He got the ball across the plane. And now decision time for fourth year coach Jason Hale. They had their troubles last week. They missed six point after touchdown attempts. Tonight, they're just one for three. So you wonder if they're going to roll the dice, go for the win here. I think they're going to go for it. What a play if they do coming up. Yeah, the one thing wow. about Antwerp, you got a lot of options with that receiving core and also uh, Reed Leasty as well. Here we go. The play of the night coming up. Elvis Jefferson timeout. We will take one as well. 49 seconds to play in the fourth quarter. Delvis Jefferson leading 34-33. But the Archers with a two-point try coming 
when we return here on WOSN. 34-33 here at Archer Field, a two-point conversion for the lead and potentially the win. Coming for the Archers, no field goal kickers available for Antwerp. Ty Jackson is out, Kendrick Robinson was injured, so the two-point try coming, trailing by one, a must get for the Archers, a keeper by Artemis, he gets to the pie line and the second extension, he is in. The two-point conversion try for Carson Artemis, the second attempt effort gets him into the end zone, and Antwerp leads 35-34 on our least famous recipe chicken scoreboard with 49 seconds to go. Jefferson, they got to make something happen now, Scoop. Well, that was just sheer determination and effort by Carson Altimus. I love the call there from uh, Coach Jason Hale. Give the ball to the guy that uh, wants the ball in his hands in that situation. He just came up big. He should have been stopped shy of that goal line. He had no business getting in. But that's where those guys that show up early in the weight room, they leave late in the weight room in those off days in the summer. Those are for those big moments as we saw right there. And what a job there by Antwerp. They came up big there, forced a fumble. It looked like the Wildcats were just going to run the timeout. And then they come up big there, a couple big third down conversions. And uh, what can you say about the job there, Ultimus? He found a way to get into the end zone. But certainly uh, not over yet if we've seen tonight. Both these teams just continue to trade punches. You just wonder if there's enough time here for Delphus Jefferson with 49.8 remaining. Big kickoff coming up here for Antwerp. We're going to need a big special teams play here by the Wildcats to maybe set up their offense for this exciting finish here at Archer Field. If it's anything like kicks before, Delva Jefferson should get it around their 25 to 30 yard line as out kicking now for Antwerp is Landon Brewer. The punter will now take over the kicking duties for Antwerp and you got Delva Jefferson. So you get it at the 30, you got 70 yards to work with, 49 seconds. One time out, and you're working into that 10 to 15 mile an hour winds that we've continued to talk about. That makes that field goal try for Scalf that much more difficult if they get to that point. Jefferson, they got to dial it up and hope for something big. Yeah, quick. no question about it. I anticipate Brewer maybe just squib kicking it down to about the 35 yard line or so, not to risk it giving up a big return. Brewer will approach it, and it'll be a high kick to the. 25, will take a roll, and Scalf is going to pick it up at about the 30. So, hey, we were pretty close. Delvis Jefferson, they're going to send out that offensive unit, and we've seen how fast they can attack, but it's been a lot of running plays, and Delvis Jefferson, they haven't done much through the air tonight, Scoop. They're going to have to seemingly don't have any other option. Yeah, you're right. Pass, They're going to have to really be one-dimensional here, go upstairs. And that time, Antwerp got away with an offsides penalty on the kickoff. That time, uh, they had one of their uh, one of their guys maybe two yards beyond, a little antsy. But again, long field here as the uh, Wildcats need to go 75 yards here in the game's final 47 seconds. Longest field goal try make of the year is 36 yards for Braylon Scalf. Quick pass out to Cody Bailey, and wow, what a tip into the hands of another receiver, Miller. Got the deflection, I don't know. That's gonna that. be a flag, that's two forward passes. Watch it right here, here's the first pass, and there's okay. a second one, that is a forward lateral. Now, if he pitches that backwards, that's a legal play, but that's gonna be an illegal forward pass. But initial look, it looked like that ball got popped out by a helmet and kind of landed into the hands of Miller, but now as you can see, on yeah, the, the officials Charles got River it right. It was a late flag, but they, they are getting it right here. Again, watch it. He certainly has control right here. And then you're going to see him make a football play, makes a step, and then he pitches it forward. And a huge uh, play, but they're going to they're going to pick up the flag. Uh, that one you might want to review at New York, <laughs> but they don't have that luxury down there that we do. Wow. But, uh, again, uh, that's a break there for Delphus Jefferson. But the clock uh, should be going here on the whistle. Antwerp playing about four men deep in that secondary. Teeman, nobody in the backfield with him. Two on the top and bottom. Teeman claps his hand. He's going to have to rush out, and he's going to be ripped down at the 25. Big time sack by the big time man, 
Derek Hines, a sophomore. Yeah, what a play by Hines. Watch it right there. He comes on the blind side there, and uh, Delphus Jefferson forced to burn their final timeout. They had no choice here. Is that time a big play there by Hines uh, coming off the backside edge there? And uh, that's going to be a tackle for loss. Again. And just as importantly, it takes another six or seven seconds off the clock. And you like to see that enter, that that edge out of the Antwerp defense. I don't know how many people are expecting you to send much blitz on that play. Everybody in the stadium is expecting the ball to go to the air, so you have that coverage set up and ready. But Antwerp, they sent a Derek Hines out of a cannon, and he seemed untouched on that edge, and the team had nowhere to go. Yeah, Derek Hines, uh, he was on a mission that play. There was no one that's going to stop him. Uh, he was able – uh, to to get to Tiemann in a hurry there. And, uh, again, you, you don't want to take a sack in that situation, but Tiemann had no idea. He was uh, right on his heels. And now uh, you have to get out of bounds or you have to get a first down. You cannot uh, get tackled short of the chains here in this situation. Tiemann gets a snap. He's pressured again. He'll evade traffic. He airs it out and tips. Intended for Miller, breaking up that pass was at least the, and that ball hung up into the air for what seemed like a million seconds, and that was a dangerous play, nearly intercepted by Leasty. Yeah, nice job by Miller. That time the offense became a defense as Leasty uh, was going to try to pick that up and seal the deal, but Miller alertly uh, was able to uh, bat it away. But again, uh, another uh, down loss, and now we're looking at third and 18. And again, you have to go, you know, at least, you know, at least 54 yards to get in field goal range right now. Tiemann rolling out of the pocket down to the Antwerp sideline. He's going to air it out and into the ground intended for Scalf. But that, that was just a duck out of water out of the hands of Tiemann. Incompletion to bring a fourth down with a final 22 seconds. Do or die time now for the Wildcats. Yeah, right now they've got to get at least 18 yards to extend this drive, but again, they only have 22.4 to work with. But first things first, you, you need to uh, get something maybe across the middle or, or something deep on a, on a deep out route, get out of bounds to stop the clock. If you do get a first down uh, between the lines, you're going to have to spike it. Uh, still time for just a couple plays. Right now, ball game here for Delphus Jefferson. Tiemann gets a snap. He's going to air it out. He's got a receiver, and it's incomplete. Was intended for Miller. He tried the one-hand extension. Well, that ball will fall into the grass, and that will likely, barring a crazy chain of events, likely going to end the season of the Delphus Jefferson Wildcats. Yeah, what a great effort by Miller to that one that time. He extended the size he could, tried to make a spectacular catch, but uh, he was met by a couple of archers. And now the archers uh, in this formation, they've done so well this season. Victory formation right here, just one snap away and taking a knee from advancing to uh, next week's uh, Regional semifinal. What a job here by Antwerp. They had their backs to the wall most of the night. They come up big in the clutch and now uh, just a knee away from advancing and to getting their second uh, playoff win here of this 2022 season. And they will go on to uh, play Gibsonburg, I believe. Gibsonburg, a one point winner as the uh, Golden Bears pull the upset. Antwerp gets a one-point victory here tonight at Archer Field. They will end the season of Delvis Jefferson 35-34 on our least famous recipe chicken scoreboard. We'll step aside and take a break and return here on WOSN. Welcome back to Archer Field one final time tonight here on WOSN. Scoop Miller and Nate Stidham. What a fantastic contest back and forth from start to finish. Antwerp, as you can see, they celebrate with their fans across the way, a 35-34 win. What a gritty victory tonight for the Archers. It really was. You know, they had their backs to the wall most of the night. They played against a Delphus Jefferson team that came in on a four-game winning streak, playing its best football. And this Delphus Jefferson team came to play tonight. But what can you say about the effort of the Antwerp Archers? They continued to get back off the carpet there after getting knocked down, taking a few shots. But uh, they had uh, one last drive in them. And uh, the touchdown pass to Brewer made it a one-point game. Coach Hale rolls the dice for the Archers, 
and uh, Altimus just makes a heady play, was able to run it in on the extra point, and that was the difference in a 35-34 Archer win. What a thriller here tonight. Antwerp's going to move on. And you look at how it came down to the 35-34 Score, Antwerp coming into the game already on their second string kicker, and they had issues last week. You talked about the six missed extra points. They were having issues tonight. They missed a pair of them tonight as well, and then their backup kicker goes down with an injury, so you have to look to a third option in the kicking game. Well, they eliminated that, and they point after try. It was a two-point conversion with less than two minutes to play, and Antwerp, that's, that is exactly how you could dial up a – hard-fought postseason win, and I, what a game that was. It was, and the fact that uh, Antwerp's missed eight extra points here in the last two Friday nights kind of made it an easy decision for Coach Hell, but uh, it certainly uh, it, what a gutsy uh, performance by his kids tonight. You know, I thought they really did a great job of just kind of persevering. You know, they had some tough breaks go against them. Delphus Jefferson scored 13 unanswered points here in that opening uh, half there, but uh, Antwerp came right back. We had Several ties, several lead changes, but Antwerp got the lead at the right time there. Their defense uh, made it stand up, and a thrilling victory for the Archers, who will now advance to uh, play Gibsonburg in the third round of the playoffs uh, next week at a location to be determined. Scoot Miller's backyard is what I thought I heard through the rumor mills. So 35-34 victory tonight for Delvis Jefferson. You can check out our website WOSN.TV for other scores and standings for more sports and teams and anyone in the state. Check out our broadcast schedule as well, upcoming games, social media posts, and more at WOSN.TV. A big thanks to our broadcast crew tonight, Director Tony Malenga on camera tonight, Dom Malenga and Tristan Atkinson, and a big thank you to the Antwerp Athletic Department, Drew Altimus, for allowing us a spot to bring you this fantastic game. And it, I had a lot of fun, Scoop. Uh, pleasure working with you. See what happens next week for the Antwerp Archers. Oh, thank you, Nate. The pleasure is all mine. And uh, everybody that was here tonight and everybody watched this game was treated to quite a show. And, uh, boy, this is the game that was won, wasn't lost. Uh, both teams deserve a lot of credit uh, for the effort we saw out here all night and all season long by these two programs. A yeah, Delvis Jefferson senior class that we mentioned came into this game with four wins in their career. They will finish with seven, including a postseason victory tonight and a big thanks again to everybody on the crew in Antwerp for welcoming us here tonight. The final score one more time on our least famous recipe chicken scoreboard Antwerp 35, Delvis Jefferson 34. For Scoot Miller, I'm Nate Stidham. Thanks for watching here on WOSN.